Greetings, my excellent friends. Welcome to the first session of our new Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition Chronicle, City of Dread. This is the first tabletop content on my stream in over a year, and my first time running this game, and most people's here's first time playing this game. So let's make it memorable. Uh, playing tonight with us in the bottom right, we have streamer Ruthie on Fire, playing Joanne of Clan Malkavian. If you want to say hello, tell us who you are, plug your stuff. Oh, oh wait, I get... Nobody mentioned plugs. Um, <laughs> uh, Ruthie on Fire, South African um, MV streamer, and this is my first foray into the adventures of tabletop role-playing, so... Please be kind to me. I'm sure they will. As the person who has to send the bad people to, 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 to hurt the party and, and, and make your lives tough, I cannot promise this. All right. Uh, <laughs> in the bottom left, we have Blue Moon Empress as Katya of Clan Gangrel. Say hello, and if there's anything you'd like to share, if not, we shall continue. Good morning. I don't have anything particular to advertise. I'd only caution our storyteller that memorable can mean a great many things. <laughs> and up top, our voice in the darkness, hypothetical velociraptor as Flynn of Clan Bruja, who has done tabletop stuff with us before on this stream a long time ago in a galaxy much the same as this one. First time with vampires, though. Yes. Well, I mean, there was sort of magic soul vampire stuff in the last thing we did, but ah, that was Smoozle's shtick. You, you and were, he killed me. Yeah, he did kill you. Wow. Yeah, you have a bad track record playing with me. You have, so far, one character and one death. Um, let's hope that that is not an <laughs> omen for now. Basically, I'm already dead in this, so we've, we've gotten the death out of the way. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, there's different levels. There's, there's, there's the first death, and then there's the one that sticks. You just gotta avoid the one the that's second sticks. death is always the scariest, I believe. Yes, precisely. All right. So, uh, before we get started, just a couple of disclaimers and warnings. Uh, as a TTRPG session like this works best without distraction, uh, all of my usual Twitch alerts are switched off. If you subscribe or if you raid me, not that any of the people who would raid me are listening to this now because they haven't raided me yet, uh, I will see it. Mm -hmm. But the bells and whistles are on mute, sorry to say. Uh, in addition, chat interaction from me will be fairly low since I'm running everything. I have to put all my energies on the game. Uh, lastly, just a general content warning. Uh, this is a horror game. It's about vampires in the modern nights. Uh, dark things will happen. We will do our best to take nothing too far. For example, there's not going to be any uh, underage NPCs in this game, but blood will be drawn. Uh, innocent mortal adults may suffer. Minds may be manipulated. Uh, as much of this game is improvised, I can't be as specific as I'd like to be, but keep those possibilities in mind and uh, do take care of yourselves. If you need to step away, step away. Hmm. Now, on to our story. Uh, some of you might know the lore of Vampire the Masquerade super well, Perhaps you know older versions, but not the current state of the lore. Perhaps you might not know anything about this at all. So I figured I'd start with a bit of an introduction. This is intended as an oversimplification. So if you're watching this live or vodded and you're a VTM lore nerd and you feel like I left a bunch of stuff out, yes, yes, I did. Please forgive me for now. now let me just get some background music. To set our mood. What do I want? I want this one. Cool. Let me know in the chat or otherwise if this is too loud. Welcome to the world of darkness. It's a world much like ours, set in the modern day. Well, without COVID, because that's no fun. Modern day, but with vampires, werewolves, magic, ghosts. Everything you'd expect in supernatural horror in urban fantasy. 
And as the name suggests, this particular game focuses on vampires. Our players today are all playing vampires, with different abilities, different methods of hunting and feeding off of the unsuspecting humans. In this world, vampires try their hardest not to kill their meals. Not out of the goodness of their unbeating hearts, but out of simple self-preservation. You see, one vampire might be a lot tougher than one average human, but you get enough people together looking to kill a monster. Well, that was a problem before the invention of napalm and flamethrowers. So the vampires hide themselves. They follow a code, remaining in secrecy, covering up the evidence of their feeding. They even try to avoid using the word vampire. They call themselves euphemisms such as the kindred or licks. They call this code of secrecy the masquerade. Vampires who break the masquerade willfully or by total mistake find themselves hunted down and punished, if not outright destroyed by others of their kind. The vampires enforce this rule through organization. Civilization. In a Western world, the kindred population of many cities are controlled by a kind of underground government, the Camarilla, or Camarilla. It varies. Traditionally, every vampire in the city would swear loyalty to that city's prince, the head of the Camarilla in that location. Gender-neutral term, male princes, female princes, non-binary princes, always the prince. More recently, however, many kindred have rebelled against the authoritarian Camarilla in a lot of places, forming the Anarch movement. They still obey the masquerade, specifically, but they don't like the other rules. They don't like being controlled by who they view as a dictator, or just a dick, depending on who you ask. Now, our story takes place in a fictional city, situated in mm, an unstated nation. We have players from all over the world as an online game, so we figured it doesn't matter. The, the city could exist in Australia, America, South Africa, England, anywhere. The city is called Shadeport, but it's better known by nicknames. Some call it the Singing City, or City of Songs. You might find out why later on. Others, as you might tell from the title somewhere, Call it the City of Dread. And that second name is the one the vampires who live here prefer. Because they've had some troubles here. Five years ago, the Camarilla ruled undisputed. Things were calm, quiet. And then one day, something happened. The kindred can't quite agree on what happened. The details are very hazy. But the rumor, the prevailing rumor, is that a high-ranking member of the Camarilla, a kindred named Nathaniel, lost his mind. He murdered the prince, possibly murdered the sheriff, if he wasn't the sheriff himself, murdered every cami bigwig he could get his hands on. Some say he declared himself the new prince, others say he named himself Baron, calling Shadeport an anarch domain in doing so. Others say he did his murders and then fucked off, stepped away right after into the shadows, just wanting to see his home burn. It certainly did that. Camarilla loyalists were fighting with Nathaniel's supporters. Anarchs sprung up looking to take control. Everyone was fighting. Everyone. It was not subtle. It was not secret. And thus Shadeport became a wonderful example of why the masquerade is so important. They call it the Second Inquisition, after the Inquisition from the Dark Ages. Government agencies from nations the world over working together to find and kill all of the creatures of the night. Agents of the Inquisition flooded the city, and every vampire in Shadeport was dead or had escaped within less than a month. This is why the details are hazy. The mortals, they barely noticed. Some story floated about of increased gang activity, increased police presence, maybe, maybe a terror threat. There's a lot you can account for when the mass media belongs to you. For a long time, 
Shadeport was a city empty of vampire activity. Of course, the vampire hunters didn't stick around to guard the place. Before too long, what was once no vamps land was now, as the meme says, free real estate. And so, five years later, a new Camarilla court begins to set up in Shadeport. They don't control much just yet, a few neighborhoods at most. They have no idea how many Anarchs or independent kindred are peppered throughout the city. They don't know what they hold, how strong they are, how long they've been here. It's a concrete jungle, and it's anyone's game. And newcomers are flocking in, month by month, week by week, interested in all that free space. And this, this is where we begin. The sun went down an hour ago in Shadeport. The creatures of the night have woken, ready to inflict themselves upon the world again. Some aim to do so as benevolently and carefully as possible. Others, most of them, couldn't care less who they might hurt. So let us cast our eyes first to the north, to the hills overlooking the city. Many mansions, vast and opulent, can be found in these hills. And in one of them, sitting hunched over a fancy desk in a small room, we find a woman. Blonde hair, business attire. She's drawing a sketch in pencil on a sheet of paper, hurriedly, frantically. Now on the walls of this room, plastered over every square inch, are other pencil sketches, highly detailed, most depicting people. People engaged in animated conversation, people behind the wheel of a vehicle, people in mid-sprint, people with weapons drawn, people doing all sorts of things from the very mundane to the very questionable. Her current sketch, still taking shape, is of a young person sitting in a limo. They look very alert, furtive, but trying their best not to look too nervous. Whoever this person is, they have an important job to do tonight. And if we leave this room, leave our mysterious woman drawing our mysterious sketch, cast our eyes up, southward, over the city, down from the hills, past various blocks and neighborhoods, we will find that very limo rocketing down a highway. And in that limo, we find our young vampire sitting exactly the way the sketch depicts. Joanne. Sitting on either side of you are two men, sharply dressed, suit and tie. They're just security personnel. They're not yours. They got into the limo and sat on either side of you when you did. They haven't said a word to you. Very intimidating. But they're just humans, so maybe not that intimidating. Across from you are another two identically boring men. And in between is an impeccably dressed woman flowing dress, done up hair. She looks ready for a night on the town. Uh, she's grinning at you, creepily. Her name is Gwendolyn. She is the Prince's Herald, which means it's her job to communicate, speak, negotiate on behalf of the Prince. And you do not like her, because she is creepy as fuck. She's staring at you, she's grinning at you, she's looking at you up and down, and she says... My, my, Joanne. You wouldn't happen to be worried about tonight's events, are you? <clears throat> well, I certainly would not. Mm. You can't give away whether you're nervous or not, but I have a feeling that if Gwendolyn is as... Uh, Astute as I think she is, she probably knows. Oh, know. she's definitely doing a, a, a sizing up look. What what do you say to her? Um, well, Gwendolyn, I've always been someone to play things by ear, so nervous? No. I Confident? See. Oh no. <laughs> 
Fair enough. Well, I for one believe in you, my dear. As our prince believes in you, I do believe you might, in fact, be her favourite at the moment. <laughs> she always speaks so highly. But it is interesting. You're, what, a month old at this point? Well, a month dead. Maybe two? And here you are, released into the world to do some work for us. That's not normal, my dear. Either this means that you are a prodigy, capable of untold wonders, or, or possibly our majesty is feeling a little desperate at the minute. Oh, but wouldn't be nice of me to suggest such a thing. No, indeed, it wouldn't. Especially not to someone who you just suggested might be highly favoured. Though, <laughs> with high favour, it's great responsibility. Yes. So, we better make a success of this, had we not? Well, that'll be up to you. I'm just here for the briefing. I do believe we're pulling in, in fact. And you are. You're turning into a multi-level parking lot. It's very dark mostly deserted. Uh, this is the place where you will be let out and where your uh, co-conspirators, associates, have been told to meet you. But they're not here yet. At least you don't think so. As you pull in and you start to see the mostly deserted field of car parks, uh, Gwendolyn suddenly does something you've never seen from her before. Uh, she looks taken aback. She, 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 there's a sharp intake of, well, not breath, but just <clears throat> as she looks and sees a single car with a figure leaning against it. You don't know whether this person's supposed to be here or not, but, you know, you, you were just ushered into this limo and, and told to do whatever the Herald said, so uh, you're not sure. But she doesn't Anything explain herself. Do you press her on it? Uh, no, I don't press her because if she's rattled, she's likely to lash out. And I don't want her to take it out on me. So I'll just watch her and see what she does. Smart. Okay. Yeah, she's okay. She's just was surprised to see what she saw. As the uh, limo pulls up and security get out first, looking their best intimidating self. <sighs> Gwendolyn just sort of looks, in, she looks at you and just, with, without her usual smile, she says, Let me do the talking here. For your sake. And, you know, that's all she says, unless you interact. She gets out, uh, puts on her smile again as this fellow, now that you're close, you can see him. Uh, he's well-dressed, not suit and tie, but, you know, upper-middle sort of. He's, he's, wearing, he's wearing a vest, a coat. He's got a fedora on, which <laughs> he's sort of working for him, kind of shorts, wearing glasses. Um, very much, he almost looks uh, a little out of fashion, like, like kind of uh, gangster-y. But he's not got any uh, weapons or anything. He's, he's just there with a, with a smile on his face waves. Gwendolyn! I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to uh, take you by surprise or worry you at all. I, I, no change to the plans. I just could not pass up the opportunity to get to meet with the prince's child. Hello, Joanne. Good evening. <laughs> Oh, very good. Oh, very good. I see Juliet shows well. I have a few mm, questions for you, if I may. Certainly. Do you look him in the eye? Yes, I do. Okay. Something happens. Uh, as you begin... Everything just gets sort of fuzzy. It's like almost double vision, sort of. But your your ears, your sound, your your hearing, is is getting all 
wonky as well. It's like it kind of feels as, as though you're passing out, but you're not. You're not. You're, you're standing there. You hear him talking, but you don't know what he's saying. You just hear it muffled. You hear Gwendolyn talking, but you don't know what she's saying. It's muffled. And then the scary bit, you hear yourself talking, and you don't know what you're saying because it's muffled. Um, hang on a quick second. Let me... Uh... Yes, this will suit. This will definitely suit. Okay. I really need to remember that vampires do this thing and you can't intimidate them like you can humans. <sighs> you don't know what is going on, but everything is just wonky and strange. Um, Mistake made. A little bit. Probably shouldn't have done the stare down. Um, but nonetheless, uh, this continues for you don't know how long because it's just, yeah, it's really trippy. Um, but you're not seeing properly, you're not hearing properly, and then all of a sudden, after what could have been a minute, what could have been a thousand years, it just snaps. And you're back. Everything's fine. You're standing there in the parking lot, in the dark. Gwendolyn is with you, looking completely unfazed, like there were no problems or, or strangenesses at all. Everything's fine. There is no man, there is no car. And as you stand there, coming back to yourself, you realize that what you do remember is slowly, well, but gaining starting to flitter and fade and pass from you. And in a few moments, you are going to feel as though you pulled up and there was no one there and you got out of the, of the limo and you have since just been waiting for the others in silence. Now, do you want to summon up all of the willpower within you to try and catch a hold of just a teensy fleeting bit of this memory. Yes, because I feel like even though I don't really know what happened, it's probably important. You don't know what you told him. Okay, no. <laughs> uh, that would be our first roll of the session. Uh, it's just going to be a major willpower roll, which is on the willpower part of your character sheet. You'll see willpower okay. and then the roll button, and it will roll every point of willpower you have. And then we'll see how uh, um, well it does. Okay. Good skill for you, though. You got a lot of that. Yeah, it's asking me for modifiers, so I leave that... None. Leave it blank. blank right? Yes. Okay. Oof. Seven. I need to see what's happening. You, you, seven dice, one success. Oh. That's not a lot. Oh. You cannot re-roll it with a point of willpower because it is a willpower roll. Mm. However, I'm going to ask you to make another one for another reason, and then I'll tell you what happens as a result of all of this. Just, just another one okay. for another reason. It's, it's not something that you're as conscious of, this one. But just do the same okay, thing again. So just a willpower roll, not a re-roll. Yes. Okay. Okay, you're good with that one. Very good. T technically, that's a crit, which doesn't matter for this, but uh, those, um, the way it works, see the two zeros? Those are tens. If you get two tens, that's a crit. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. So. Uh, this, by the way, for those watching, is our little dice window. I will bring it up whenever we do a roll so you can see how well it went. For the actual attempt to hold on to the memory, uh, it's slipping through your fingers. Your, your one success buys you one thing. If you see this man again, he will feel familiar to you, but you will not know why. You don't have enough of it to be able to call him on his BS, but you will know that it's not the first time 
well, yeah, you won't be sure. It'll, it'll be vague and it will be annoying and it will, it will get at you. However, you did well on your other roll. And as you are standing there, and you have no idea why this happens to you, but music comes into your head. Rather singing, a cappella singing, just, just a, a voice sort of almost sounds like it's musing on something. You just, you just hear. When the fires, when the fires have surrounded you, when the hounds of hell coming after you, I've got blood, I've got blood on my name. When the fires, when the fires are consuming you, and you say sacred stars won't be guiding you, I've got blood. I've got blood, blood on my name. You don't know why that happened, but it reminds you of something your sire told you about once, about hearing the voice of the city. She's always telling you to try and listen to the voice of the city, that the voice of the city guides her. And can guide you too. Maybe, maybe today you just heard it, but you don't know why. Because as the memory fades, nothing interesting happened. You just got out of the limo, and here you are. Gwendolyn sort of looks at you. Are you okay, my dear? You seemed a, a little off for a moment there. Everything, everything fine. <laughs> <coughs> Why wouldn't everything be fine? Oh, I don't know. It's very hard to tell in these nights. Well, I'm sure our friends will be with us shortly. Takes a bit. I, hmm? I do hope so. Waiting is tiresome. <laughs> it takes a bit. She is uh, not inclined to talk, uh, and I, if you are not, then we are fine. Until eventually, coming out of the darkness, you see, first, two figures. One of them quite a bit, well, not that much, but one of them a little shorter than the other, a little oddly shaped. As they come closer, you realize that it is a person and a dog. Uh, Katya is arriving on the scene. Uh, tell us what Joanne can see, but both in terms of the person and the dog. Well, the dog is very nearly as tall as the person to begin with. Ah. It's a great shaggy beast with a gray and brown coat. Looks like it might have some manner of hound in its ancestry somewhere, but it's certainly no purebred. It's a master or a partner, whichever may be. Is a... She's on the shorter side. She's a very plainly dressed. She has a sort of flyaway brown hair that's... She looks like she's entering middle age. Okay. Gwendolyn, her eyes just almost pop out of your, her head as you uh, approach. She, she does not appear to um, have expected you specifically. Uh, but you're not sure if... You don't recognize her. You have no idea who this is. You were told as to who would be waiting for you, and you get the impression that this is the um, person that your friend described as a horrible bitch but with clout. Uh, and as as you get closer, she looks at you and just with that sort of, yeah, that haughty sort of upper-class bitch tone says, You know, Mikhail did warn me that a dog may be joining us tonight, but I certainly wasn't expecting to. I will respond in the most neutral level. Good evening to you too. I imagine you have a name. Katya. I am Gwendolyn, herald of Prince Hammersley of Shadeport. I speak with the prince's voice. You will do well to remember that. Now, I believe we are waiting for one more unless the dog is going to shapeshift into one of your kind and scare the absolute bejesus out of me. 
Hi, Nalich. Hmm. Your, uh, Pasha, your dog, it tends to... The, 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 the mental link that you have uh, allows you to stop this if you want, if you want to play your, hold your cards to your chest, but generally, Pasha will react in a way in accordance with your emotions regarding the person. So, uh, how does Pasha respond to Gwendolyn? He will sit patiently. Okay, no... No growls, no, uh, no issues. She, she says, well, he seems well behaved. We shall see about you. Uh, there is a, about a minute or two before the last member of our group arrives. Uh, do you two speak and introduce yourselves or is it a, a, an awkward silence? What, what, what do we choose? Well, I've had one difficult and unnerving encounter so, I don't know. My, my character feels uncomfortable. Joanne is not sure what the heck is going on, so Fair. I'm just checking out this lady and your dog. I will give a friendly nod to the newcomer and a neutral good evening to you as well. Neutral is good. A nod in return. Okay, okay. But. You know, slight, uh, slight awkwardness as is fair. Oh, hang on. Get rid of that. All right. And after a decently uncomfortable amount of time, uh, the final member of our coterie appears. Uh, yes, many solemn hero nods, of course. Uh, the final member of our coterie appears, uh, walking... Well, not walking, actually. Uh, you hear the sounds of arriving vehicle as a van pulls up. And someone is behind that van. Uh, Flynn, if you could tell us what our, uh, what our party is looking upon. Uh, do you want me to describe the van, or just or me, or what, what are we doing? Well, the person behind the van. The van's just a plain white van. Looks, um... Big enough to carry some stuff. Not, uh, it, it, it's deliberately uninteresting. The van's got no signage. You, uh, you see this sort of massive red hair behind the wheel. It's sort of at soccer mum height. Where this, this van is too big for this driver, but she's doing it anyway. Excellent. All right. Do you pull up right next to the group or do you like create some distance and walk over? Um, I think I'll, I'll grab some distance. Um, yeah. Give me give me some time to sort of scope him out a bit. Gwendolyn looks at you. Her eyes, they do the same thing. They, they go up in, in a sort of appraising. She looks you up and down. But this time the venom does not come out. She simply says, I imagine you are Flynn. Yes. I'm, I'm here as commanded. Fashionably late works at a party, my dear. Here it, well, nonetheless, you're, you're, not, you're not too bad. Okay. The group is assembled. We have two very lucky individuals looking to find acceptance and tolerance within our humble court. And we have our unproven child embarking on her first official job for the Shadeport Camarilla. I would advise you both, talking to everyone except Joanne, to ensure that this one returns to us alive and well. You will not want to know what happens to you if she does not. I'll on vampire note. Hmm. Very well. I shall explain your task. It is fairly simple, trifling, really. There is no reason why things should go awry, but you will have to listen very closely, for I am not one to repeat myself. You are to take this conveyance. She does not particularly like the van. To a warehouse. Thompson's Shipping and Receiving Warehouse. 
It is across from Samson Dock along the West Bank. She gives you a, an address, which uh, I'm not going to do addresses because that's boring, uh, but she gives you one and you note it down. Or at least you do if you're paying attention. Uh, upon arrival, you are to recover for us a wooden crate. It should be listed in their inventory as item 9842724. Did you get that? Oh yeah, it's fine. I've got it. I can repeat it if you like. 9842724. We've got it. She looks defeated. <laughs> Impressive. You are to look inside, assess the contents for danger. We, we do not exactly know what is in this thing. What we know is that it is a gift for our prince, Prince Hammersley, in celebration of the dawning of a new day in Shadeport and the forming of a new court. At least we think so. It's possible that it's rigged to explode, and when you open it up, all of you will, you know, turn to mush. But that's fine, because none of you are me. Now, upon ascertaining that you will not explode, and that the gift, whatever it may be, is quite safe, you are to deliver it to Prince Hammersley at her mansion house in Reed Hills. Uh, Miss Joanne knows exactly where that is, uh, given that they live there, yes? <clears throat> yes, I'll handle the delivery. Wonderful. Particularly. Oh, of course, the three of you will go, uh, because should things come to pass, Her Majesty the Prince will be willing to meet with you, Flynn and you, Katya. And should your efforts please her, you will be welcome to stay in our city for the foreseeable, so long as you are willing to do your part as we reclaim this city for the glorious Camarilla. Are we clear? Will that change? Are we clear? I can apprehend. Crystal. No questions. Worries. Demands, if you're daring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I do amuse myself, you would not dare. Right. Well, there is nothing for it. I would wish you luck on your journey. I imagine that you will need it. She nods at Joanne, nods at Flynn. Fucking just blank stares, Katia. And, uh signals to her personnel who get back in the limo and slowly drive away leaving the three of you alone and a van Flynn will just walk straight back to the van just ignoring everyone just walk back to the van get in okay all right stop stop putting the address into her phone a human of action well not human vampire I'm gonna have to get used to that <laughs> I still make references to gasps of air, breath and stuff I mean yeah you, you use air because you talk with air but you just don't use it to yeah. breathe nonetheless uh, if you two the other two are approaching the van uh, there is a logistics question there is a seat in the front of the van but there's also places to sit in the back there is definitely enough room for doggo where does everyone put themselves? I will I... go at the back of the vehicle with Doggo. Very well. Does Joanne I... sit up front or sit in the back with the dog and the, the gangrel? Uh, I'm not not keen on the dog. Um, <laughs> you know, memories, childhood memories, Fair. scary one. Um. And no amount of vampiring is going to ever take that away, I don't think. Um, so I kind of look at Flynn and, you know, shotgun? Sure. My, my, my van, my rolls there, my music. As long as it's not Kurt Darren, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We are so fine. Great. 
Okay. Now, in the interest of protecting myself from the copyright demons, I will <laughs> ask you what the music is, and we will imagine it together. How festive. Yes. Um, she's listening to Electro Swing. Flynn and I are going to get along okay. so well. Okay, <laughs> so does, does Joanne start feeling better as the van starts moving and some... Yes. This is happy music. Okay. This is good vibes. Alright. Uh, any chatter on the way to the warehouse or is everybody still in the we don't know each other, we don't trust anybody, silent as the grave, literally in, 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 in a certain manner of speaking until you get um, to the place. Flynn will take her eyes off the road, uh, turn and just, just be like, hey, I'm Flynn, and just hold out her hand whilst driving. Okay. I will shake it very awkwardly because handshakes are, are weird, but cool because Flynn is cool. So we'll attempt this social interaction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tempted to make you roll. <laughs> no, I won't. Uh, I, I, I would if it were someone like wasn't ostensibly an ally, um, just just for composure. But I think you have a good amount of that. Anyway, okay. Not much happens. I mean, you're heading out uh, of the nondescript parking lot. So the west edge of the city the West Bank, as it's known uh, to describe the whole region, though there's a more specific part that, that's officially called the West Bank. Uh, it's most of the city's coastline along the west. There's toward more, more, more to the south, there's the touristy, uh, beach housey, nice wonderful places to catch some sun which you will never visit because you like being alive uh, but more north you have the industrial docks, warehouses all that stuff it's uh, for those of you that have been here as a kindred for a little while have you made any attempt to try and figure out the lay of the land who what who sort of runs things in a given place do you reckon i expect i would have done my best to keep an ear to the ground so to speak but whether anyone would be interested in actually telling me anything is possibly another matter well we can roll to figure out if you have any knowledge i suppose we can what uh what would be your methods to to find stuff out do you reckon just to figure out what kind of skill you would use to um, learn whether you're sneaking around and eavesdropping or socially convincing I would, people. I would guess, judging from what I what I focused on, possibly streetwise. Okay. You can do a intelligence and streetwise roll for me. Let me know if you need assistance. Possible. Ah, here we go. Mm. Or I could roll entirely the wrong thing. That is, yeah, that is not the correct skill, and that's one less dice than you should have had. Mhm. Mm but you can. Uh, oh, we, we can we can we can scrap that. I'll be merciful in session one, and uh, you can. Uh, Redo it with three. Not bad. Not bad. One success. You, you have the general idea that there is probably a vampire somewhere along the coast. Maybe Fair more! <laughs> uh, anybody else would have... I'd, I'd, I'd say for Joanne, like, you'd know enough about this area being a local, but that was before you died, and since you died, your, your, your prince hasn't really let you go around lear learning things, so you wouldn't know anything about whether you're walking into a 
owned location or anything, but uh, Flynn, would you have attempted to gain any knowledge? Uh, a little, but very much from the outside. Like, it wouldn't have been done from, from talking to a lot of people, because he's not particularly welcome. It depends on where you go. You're, you're not super welcome in the Camarilla, but... Then yeah, I, I would have tried a little. How? What you've done? Uh, when I first arrived, I would have sort of just asked around and... I guess, watched people and listened in to people's conversations and that sort of thing. Nothing overt, really. Same role, then, I'd say, intelligence and streetwise. Use that, I go streetwise and then add intelligence, or...? Yeah, that's how you get the drop the drop box to do what you want. Click on the skill, not on the attribute, or else you won't get the thing you need. Which is the dumbest part of the sheet. There you go. Okay, three successes. That is complete success based on your dice there. Um, there are whispers and rumors that the West Bank belongs to Anarchs. You don't know who. You may have succeeded fully, but that doesn't mean that there was a high ceiling of knowledge for you to gain. Uh, you know enough to be on your guard and that Gwendolyn, who did not mention anything about other kindred, um, may have done so because she does not know, may have done so because she's not very nice. Um, but, yeah, you wouldn't know names, you wouldn't know stuff, you just, just have a general the docks and the beaches and and all of that stuff is is anarch anar anarch anarchy land which is not good news for you but hey maybe none of them will run into you i i'd tell this like i'd say i'd i'd discuss this with um yeah everyone else in the van okay well i'll say that you guys pull up close to this warehouse. It's... I mean, it's huge. Uh, large loading bay shut tight with many um, closed entrance things that trucks would go through. Um, you... Are they elevated? I know this like, has no relevance whatsoever, but, no worries. <laughs> but are there elevated loading bays above the ground that go like straight into the back of the truck? Because those are particularly intimidating. <laughs> well, if that if, if if that's the worst it could be for you, then yes, they're all like that. Um, that's just along the the, the one the one side uh, along the not back but around the corner. You, you just mostly see just wall, but there is a small side door. So some stairs leading up to it. Little little side corner door. Uh, which is where the um, human-sized visitors enter, as opposed to the truck-sized visitors, when they feel like it. Uh, you can see some guards, just, you know, your standard uh, security mooks wandering back and forth in front, uh, outside, spaced apart in your standard, you know, line-of-sight patrolling. Um, you can't just walk in, you will be seen by one of them. Do you park far enough away that they don't notice a van in the area, or do you bold-faced it? Um, I'd probably... Is, is there, like, a... Is there, a, a, like, parking with other vans or other vehicles? Yeah, I mean, the place has parking all over. For, specifically for the warehouse, there is a parking lot, or, well, parking spaces uh, not too far from the building itself. That would be the boldest way. But there's and other... The, yeah, other is there like on, on street, sort of? Like park down the street a bit? Yeah, you can... You can there, there are other warehouses in the area. There's obviously docks behind you. Um, and you could just park on the side of the road. Uh, you could park anywhere that makes sense to park in a place like this, as far away as you like. Yeah, I'll, I'll park a little bit away on the side of the road, sort of, unobtrusively. 
Hopefully. You'll find out. All right, let's get some music <laughs> for this. I will get better at uh, having the music running as time goes on, but, you know. When I remember it, we have music. There we go. All right. Now is the time to figure out your plan of entry and whether... I, I imagine there are three basic ways to do this. Talk your way in. Sneak your way in. Fight your way in. But feel free to come up with anything else. Tunnel. <laughs> I have a question first. Mm. Do the guards look identically dressed to Gwendolyn's goons, or is it impossible to tell one suit from another? No, the guards... Well, the guards aren't wearing suits. They're just more wearing security uniform. Mm. They don't look particularly special. They just look like dudes making shit wages, working night shift, protecting a mortal business. That doesn't mean it is a mortal business. Plenty of vampires like to look as unvampiric as possible in these nights. <clears throat> Place is called Thompson Shipping and Receiving, which is about as uninteresting as you can imagine. Big sign along the side wall with that in fact name on it. Well, since Joanna was the one we were instructed to keep safe, I will defer to her if she has any preference as to what she would feel safe doing. Uh, well, I always reckon if the party is not too abrasive, we can try the sneaking method. Just, you know, be as... as easy as possible. Like, no unnecessary confrontation. No... We're already in the City of Dread. We don't need more drama. So. Hmm. <laughs> we, we could always start off with the sneak, and then if we get caught, go with the talking option, and then if that fails, we can fight, right? Exactly! <laughs> it's like, like you read my mind. It's a flowchart! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Very well. I would instruct Pasha to stay with the van while we sneak. Not going to have the dog sneak in? We'll not do stealth dog at this time. I was so looking forward to stealth dog. No, all right, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> it is a van train, right? It is a what? Oh, it's van, van train. It's right? not going to... Oh, quite so, yes. P Pasha is not going gonna... to... If it wasn't, it would be rather unpleasant given the size. So that would probably be the first thing I would train it for. The bigger the dog, the more the pee. Okay. Um, I mean, that makes sense, I guess. I don't know. I'm not an animal person. Um, mm. Firstly, is anyone using supernatural means of stealth as you get out and begin to make your way? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I will not be. I know that... Flynn, Flynn's trying to show off a bit. That would be I'm interesting, going... but Flynn, I don't believe you have any supernatural oh, stealth. Oh, yeah. No, sorry. I thought you meant just, like, a stealth check kind of thing. What? No, that's 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 mundane stealth, yes. Well, I'm mundane stealthing then, but super well. However, Joanne, you, you would like to use uh, Unseen Passage here, yes? I... I think... I think so. I feel like that would be a good move. <laughs> mm -hmm. You could use both. You could use Unseen Passage and Silence of Death. It's just it'll take a minute before you can activate the second one, whichever one you pick. Second. All right. Um, well, I mean, let's let's go with the Unseen Passage, and then you yes. know, if we if we. Like, if I'm being particularly clumsy, then we can <laughs> activate stage two of stealth. Um, okay. But yeah, just now, now to see sort of somewhere we can go without being too obvious. Well, for the record, Silence of Death is completely free. It costs you nothing to activate. What it does is eliminate all sound that you make completely. Uh, okay. Unseen Passage, meanwhile, makes you invisible, kind of. Provided no one is looking at you when you turn it on, so you would need to ask Flynn and Cardia to turn their heads. 
<laughs> which they may or may not do. Um, however, the rules. Well, wait, I have a question. Yes. If the dog sees you, does that count? I I imagine that it would the, the ability would work on the dog. Um, I think you would want the dog to not be looking at you when you activated it. Yes. However. Okay. Cool. You could something to be aware of. Probably activate it. It's just I I my my house rule would be that the dog doesn't get affected if it's looking at you. However, if a person is looking at you, you you would struggle to get it running. Okay. That's how I feel about it, um, and what I say goes. It's nice being okay, in charge. So like the balancing thing, maybe Let, let's go with the free skill because it's nothing too serious. Like we we're not in any current threat. We're just trying not to be loud and obnoxious. So to avoid any an unseemly tripping over eye beams or finding the only open manhole in an entire stretch of road and making a noise. Let's go. <laughs> I'll just go quiet for now. Quiet and for follow. now. Okay. Uh, Katia the and Flynn, you notice that all of a sudden Joanne is not making footsteps at all Me? and is not making any kind of. You just, you just, it's like if, if you're not looking at Joanne, Joanne is not there and it's really creepy. It's like, you know, that sort of hairs on the back of your neck thing where you feel like there is a presence, but the presence is not making any of the things that presences normally make in sight and sound. Yeah, when you're looking at them, they're, they're, they're right there, and it's fine, but they're still not making any noise. Alright. Otherwise, Flynn and Katia, and Joanne, because you are physically visible, uh, we will need to make some stealth checks, which would be uh, dexterity and stealth. As you On it. begin this, well, actually, first question: there is a gate, well, not a gate, but there is like a fence uh, going all around, and a gate that has got guards in it. How are you getting in? How are you getting past fence? Are you leaping it, cutting it, tunneling is it? it? Uh, is it topped with barbed wire or anything? Or just like a chain link fence? I have decided that chance will tell me. Ooh. There is barbed wire at the top. I regret asking now. I really regret asking. <laughs> Does it look as though... Guards regularly patrol the perimeter of this fence, or they, do they just stick by the doors? Um, I imagine that you guys would take some time to watch, like a good 15 minutes, see their whole patrol. There is a guard who eventually will go around the side and mm -hmm. do a perimeter. Like, if you guys try and walk around the perimeter to see what's in the back and to the left, because right now you're at a corner between the front entrance and the down, down right. Um... Would you take time to move about, do it, do it, do a circle, one of you, two of you, or the three of you? I might take a quick look because I can move quickly and quietly, just to certainly quietly. Just see. It doesn't require me any like special. I can just walk at a, you know, as we say here in South Africa, at the rabbit pace, mm -hmm. and just quick. Uh, I will say dex plus stealth check, which is not a great roll for you. Um, if you fail it, it just means that someone sees you walking around. You're not doing anything. You're not trespassing. You're outside of the place, but someone will know that you took a walk around. I mean, do I have to walk all the way around? It's up to you. If, if you want to, if you want to look at the perimeter of the place. Hmm. Who has the better dex roll here? Because <laughs> I probably have the worst. Well, that's a little bit better gamey, but if if I were asked, I would say I'm not unaccustomed to sneaking around when required. I mean, it's not meta gamey if you um just ask in character who's good at like. Does anyone want to do a perimeter check? Are they good at 
getting around quietly. I could probably yeah. do so. Okay. Perhaps we shall send Katya on a dex and stealth check then. Alrighty, nice. here we go. Two successes. I will say that that is enough because they're not really looking to find someone sneaking in the shadows around the warehouse. Um, you're fine. Now, let's figure out, this is the next step, uh, whether you actually noticed anything. So, we're, we're, we're going to go with um, intelligence and awareness. I mean, you see what's in front of your eyes with with your one success. Uh, you see that basically the we'll, we'll say the left side, just like, it's not actually, but like just just based on from the front door. Uh, we'll say that the left side is very similar to the right. It's uh, also got the big sign painted on the wall with Thompson shipping and receiving. Um, there is another side door. Uh, the back there is. Effectively, nothing that you would. No, nothing sticks out at you as, as a as a point of entry or anything. Uh, the warehouse itself, uh, the best way in would be one of the side doors, which are not constantly guarded. Uh, what you do see is, yeah, there's there's one guard that is very very slowly walking around the entire perimeter of the warehouse, and it takes him a long time to get through it because it's 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 big. Um, there are three hanging out, patrolling up and down the front at different intervals. And then along the sides, there's another one, uh, down each side who will move up and down fairly close to the door. They don't head further back. The, 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 the back would be, to your estimate, the best place to get through the fence, because... Half the time there's no one there, the other half the time there's one dude. Mm -hmm. However, it's still a fence. Is, um, can I have a look in the van? Is it like a toolkit or something in the van? I don't know, did you put one in there? Um, it's not my van! Yeah, but did, did... Okay, but... Yeah, I wouldn't have. Well, you could... We, 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 do a, we could do a preparedness roll to see if you remembered. That's, that's how we sort that sort of thing out. All right. Secure to go. Uh, that would be. Uh, hang on, let me. I, 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 I. Okay, for tools. Where's Flynn? For remembering tools, it would be intelligence and craft. Oh no. So for you, it would be intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> How the f... Okay. Well, since you managed to succeed on both of your damn dice, there is a full toolkit in your van because you figured that you would probably be getting up to some mischief uh, and pretty much whatever within reason in terms of smaller tools you do not have a sledgehammer but yeah the, ge the general tools that one would use to, to cut through a fence are, are available to you i'm waiting for the other shoe to drop with my rolls i really am you'll get there yeah uh, is there a is there a set of bolt cutters in there yes yeah I'll, I'll grab them out and sort of motion towards the back sort of fence i was hoping Flynn would have something like this and now that they do I mean this a toolkit plus electro swing could one ask for better teammates I think not okay so <laughs> I'll mark that down as some respect points earned um, by the power of good dice nice okay <laughs> I won't make you guys all roll stealth checks to get around to the back because now that Katya has uh, done a perimeter search uh, she knows how to guide y'all to not be seen by the patrolling guards and, and when to move and when not to. So you're, you come up upon 
the back fence. Uh, I won't have you roll for this either because you have a tool and even if it takes you a while, you'll get through it. Uh, you will be able to cut a hole through the fence and make it into uh, the warehouse grounds. You are now officially, congratulations, trespassing. Uh, okay. And I imagine your next step will be to get inside. To the nearest door, I presume? Either uh, either side door will work. You just have to pick a direction. Left or right. Presumably it won't matter. They're very similar. And yet, right? Yeah. I mean, we can roll the dice, but right, right sounds good. I gesture vaguely to the right door, and if they agree... Okay. You can't see the door on the right just yet, but as you round the corner, and I'd imagine you guys would, like, do the whole corner thing where you, 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 you hide around. Uh, you can see... Yeah, you can see the side door on the right. Um, you timed it. Actually, we'll say that you went to the right because you timed it such that the uh, full perimeter patrolling guard is busying himself on the opposite side. Um, I would say that Katia's success is enough for her to have ordered that. Uh, you say that the guard whose job it is to um, take care of the side door is pacing back and forth. You have a few options as to how to deal with him, I imagine. But I'm not going to help you figure it out. Oh no. <laughs> we could distract him, like throw a pebble or something and, and sort of lure him over and then incapacitate him? We could. We could. Like, um, as an option. Is his patrol such that he can see this door at all times? Or can we wait him to sort of be on the... Uh, walking the other direction? Theoretically, he should probably be keeping an eye on the door at the whole time, but um, he doesn't. Uh, he's He looks tired. Um, for the record, you do see that he has a pistol. Uh holstered, and he also seems to have a little uh, baton sort of whack and stick folded up. Um, police stuff, basically, but he's not police. He's just, you know, a mm -hmm. security guard. Um, you, you see, yeah, he's, he's bleary-eyed. He's just kind of going through the motions. He doesn't look particularly competent or aware, and so as he passes, um, he's not looking at the door after he walks past it in either direction towards you or away from you. Would I conceivably have enough time to slip around and see if the door is at least unlocked before he notices? If you pass your roll. Worth a shot, I think, unless anyone else has suggestions. This uh, is like, I mean, it follows our flight chart kind of perfectly. <laughs> All right. Okay. Unless, uh, unless Joanne has any more of her voodoo stuff going on. Yeah. I don't have particularly useful voodoo skills. I'm very Ravenclaw and kind of <laughs> unsuited to this kind of mission, but here we are. <laughs> we, we do what is demanded of us. Exactly. <clears throat> All right, well, I'll do my best to be unseen again. Yes, yes. stealth decks again. Okay, two successes. That is enough for our sleepy idiot guard. He does not hear you. Um, you're not as quiet as you wanted to be. But he's tired and he doesn't give a fuck. So you, you, you sneak up to the door. Uh, and once again, for fun. The door is not locked. All right, well, let's see. Uh, I'll give a quick wave around the corner to my comrades, and I'll slip inside myself and presume that they can okay. take the next opportunity to follow behind. They will have to wait for him to make another pass, so I will describe to you what you see as you enter. Um, in this particular side door, you see 
just like I mean it's a warehouse there's tons of piled up crates and boxes in some areas there's shelving uh, all down in rows filled to the brim there's some empty spaces as well no doubt they have a lot of traffic in and out um, there are more guards inside generally about you know again spaced out fairly perfectly there's uh, one for each corridor none that particularly come close to you at this point you're, you're able to just I guess duck in between uh, the edge and the corner of, of one of the full up shelves such that for as for the next little while uh, you can be on the opposite side of, of wherever a guard is looking in your direction there aren't so many of them that you're going to be any danger here while you're waiting for the others it might be tougher when there's three people um, you do see that different boxes and crates of sizes tend to have labels uh, that match the number scheme of what you were told to look for. They seem to be somewhat ordered, like, you know, on, on a given... There'll be a grouping of a whole bunch that, that, that follow in numerical order, uh, and then after a certain point, suddenly it'll have jumped up, and, and you'll be in a... So it's, 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 it's semi-ordered. You would have to search without without any assistance you would have to search um mm -hmm. to find the general number range of this crate that you were looking for before you found it at the moment i'll just lurk and keep an eye on the guard patrol routines and wait for my teammates to follow in okay are the other two ready to make dex and stealth checks to uh slip into this door uh, yeah, I will go last, though, in case okay. something happens to Joanne so that she's not left out there alone. Okay. Oh, that's good thinking. Um, does my Unseen Passage have a time limit or any sort of no. draining capacity? Okay, so there is one issue with Unseen Passage. If you use it and you want to get through the door, Flynn will need to hold it open for you. Or else right. it will turn off. It is unlimited, but it has um, two big problems. One is that you can't mm -hmm. speak above a whisper, which you'd have to turn off Silence of Death to do anyway. Uh, and the other is that you cannot interact with any objects. Uh, you can, like, touch a wall, but interact in the sense of doing something with it. You cannot open a door. Mm. You cannot... can't lift anything, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm thinking is, if I were to activate my Unseen Passage... I could go with Flynn, we could make one shot, once we're in, Flynn can hide, I can move through the warehouse a little bit and try and find the general area where our crate is, move back, and then we can take the plan from there. Unseen Passage would be very good for uh, trying to find, yeah, yeah, that would be, <laughs> I, yeah, okay. Alright, that's a solid plan. To, unse to activate cool. Unseen Passage, um, it is just a simple Rouse check, uh, which you can find at the very, very bottom of your first page. Rouse. You have succeeded. You do not get hungrier. You stay at Hunger 1, which all of you are at. No one has had any issues so far. Fantastic. I will remind you, just all of you, that at any point, if you make any roll and you think it's really important you can take a rouse check to do a blood surge, which will give you and two extra dice to use. Oh. Mechanically, that means you're improving your uh, attribute, your, your, your trait, so you're using the blood to increase your strength, your intelligence, your wits, your resolve, whatever it is. You can't do it on every roll, but any roll that has one of those nine, you can uh, rouse check. Okay, good to know. So, we are moving. Well, obviously Flynn has to move first, and then I follow. Yeah. Right on her. Stealth and right dex check for Flynn. Because you are both invisible and completely inaudible, you don't need to roll shit so long as you don't break the rule of your power and deactivate it. He ain't gonna see okay. someone he can't see or hear. <laughs> Alright, three successes for Flynn right there. That is... Yeah, <laughs> better. You're you're like a ghost uh, while this guard is puffing on a cigarette. Um, 
you two just slip in. Uh, you listen to what Joanne said. You, you yourself cannot see or hear Joanne. So you just sort of hold the door open. Wait a bit. And then before the guard turns back around, you slip in and hope to hell that Joanne came with you. Which they did. They did. Alright. Uh, so yeah, there's all these shelves. Uh, there is a, a, like a, you know, it's obviously a tall ceilinged, uh, building. There are some offices that are kind of, you know, that, that sort of warehouse office thing where they're sort of suspended up in the sky. <laughs> um, I was, ugh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, if there, you, you notice that, and if you're gonna get seen, it's probably gonna be by the dude up there. Um, not you, Joanne, but, but, yeah, that's, that's an added complication for, for all the ones that are um, patrolling. So, are you going to now okay, so travel so your I've way? I've told Flynn what yes. the plan is. Does Flynn tell Katya, and then I just mission and do my yeah, thing? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll fill Katya in, I think. Okay, cool. Um, I moved to the first group of crates to see sort of what the, the number grouping is and if I can establish any sort of pattern. Um, well, <laughs> the, the ones that this are... This would be very truthful in real life, but I may or may not have gotten to ask what the number was. Do I know? Or was I supposed to get the details from that? <laughs> Flynn is the person who audibly stated uh, that... She noted it down. You yeah. okay? Yes, it was five five number. It's just written. It's written on my forearm. So, oh, that's what you did. Okay. Do, do well, you, I, have a, I have a pen and no paper. So you look at Flynn's forearm and you see nine eight four two seven two four. And <laughs> while God, you personally, <laughs> I'm willing to let you forget that and not note it down. Joanne knows now. Joanne, Joanne okay. has has. Jo registered that. Uh, Alright. Immediately in front of you, the crates start with 576. So no, not remotely near. But... Okay. Um, are there... I look around. Are there crates, like, on high levels? Because I've mentioned there's one of those floating office things. Like, so do we have stairs and grids packing situations? Or is everything on the ground floor level? There is some, like, walkways with access to higher-up shelves. Uh, not in every section, but definitely in a good half of the place. Um, however, there's not a great amount. There's a lot, but when I said that there were several empty sections, they seem to have emptied out the upper-level stuff almost deliberately because it's more annoying up there. Um, so... Yeah, there is some. I'm, I'm, I would move forward to the first immediate next grouping of crates just to see what their numbers are there. <laughs> okay, uh, what I will have you do is abstract this a little because it will be very boring if we search every shelf. So I'm going to say that you yes. slowly make your way through, uh, you dismiss them. Like, okay, so what, what you learned from studying the first, I guess, grouping before the numbers changed, is that the first five digits uh, tend to match up, and then there's a good, like, 50 or so items um, in that general shelf with the same, uh, same five. So you just need to find 98427, and then narrow it down to find 24 on the end of that. So we're gonna see... How long it takes you and whether you manage it. Uh, let's. What would this be? Because this is a dedicated search and it's not that. We're going to say it's resolve because it's about focus. It's about making the same checks over and over again. It's fairly simple. You're just looking at the numbers. Uh, so we're going to say it is resolve and investigation. Okay. So. What, what, here we go. Okay, and then I would just click on uh, Rolls Resolve. 
you'd click on roll investigation below it. Add resolve. And zero modifier. Boom. And what do we get? Three successes. Yeah, you manage. That's I'd, I'd say it was a difficulty three. Um, invisibly, inaudibly, you travel around uh, until eventually you find a bunch of um, differently shaped uh, crates. Well, rather, you find... It doesn't take you long to find 2-4 because it's different to every other one in this particular grouping. Uh, all of the others are uh, sort of slightly bigger than you'd want to pick them up and carry them. But someone who was big and strong would probably... Like, you know, a, 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 an above-averagely beefy person would be fine with these crates. But the one... That is marked 9842724. No. For one thing, it's made of far sturdier wood. It's just, you know, very, uh, very secured. It's strapped. That's what's keeping the lid on, straps. Uh, and it just, its general size, you feel like you could lie down in it if it were open. You are not going to be able to pick that up, A, because you'll become visible, and uh, B, because it's as big as you are. Well, fun times. Also straps. Straps are very good. It is to space it out. Uh, mm -hmm. Say you are in, you know, you're in a corner of the warehouse. It is on the ground floor. It is three rows down and then you would have to travel down that corridor until you got to that crate. Uh, about a minute's walk. Again, it's a big place. Okay, well, I, 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 oh, oh wait, well, hold on. How did they, uh, have I become visible again now? So they can hear me and see me and that we found the crate and- Do you go me. back to them first? Because, again, there are guards. Mm. There are guards. There it is... would make sense to go back to them. Yeah. Because, obviously, if I interact with the crates, uh, well, duh, um, then everyone will know where I am. So that would solve that problem. But it would add a significantly more bigger problem. So, yeah, I go back to them. Okay. We know where and what, and I can give them information, and we can make a plan from there. There is, once again, one guard patrolling that particular uh, shelving corridor. Um, there's enough boxes and crates stacked up that the ones to either side, the guards to either side, probably won't see, but they would hear if shit goes down. But there is one guard. He looks a bit more alert than the one who was guarding the side door. He looks kind of jittery. Question? Yes. Ooh. From what I know, does it look like this crate's area is overseen by the Elevated office? Or out of their sight? Uh, it's... The shelving itself would block their view. In the place where you're going. However, uh, if you head further out to where there's like a gap where people can walk through, then... Yeah. Very, vis very visible. Could we conceivably quietly open this crate like do we have to take the whole crate out or do we just need that the contents because what if it's like majority of his packaging joanne can you... open it i don't know that it will be quietly the... yeah that would be my concern too in order to open it from what you saw joanne you would have to cut the straps and then lift off the lid okay so we don't need a crowbar is what you're saying. I have a knife on me I could use to cut the straps. I mean, did you attempt, did you like, you couldn't really do it with the straps. You have no idea how hard it is to lift the lid because <laughs> you couldn't attempt that while the straps were fixed. Yeah, so it could be a scenario of we cut the straps and then we need a crowbar, so that was kind of pointless anyway. Or... I suspect the crowbar is 
Not necessary for one of us. Huh? <laughs> okay. I mean, if push comes to shove, um, could I not distract? Perhaps the jittery guard with a, I don't know. There is nothing in the world you cannot attempt. <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> okay, so um, let's. We can get to the crate unseen. We can examine it. We can make a plan. I have my seduction in my back pocket. If we need going forward, I will. I will attempt to uh, persuade the jittery gentleman that his attentions are better suited elsewhere. The jittery gentleman. Very good. Sound forward. Works um, for me. Excellent. Who goes first? And, uh... Well, I mean... Well, I think... I, I think I can go. I'm likely to do the uncrating. Once again, it's a back and forth patrol. Um, he will, because you're at the end, uh, he will be facing you as he comes forward. You would want to time it as he begins his journey the other way. Eventually, he will walk past the crate that you need, and then he will keep going for a while. He goes past mm -hmm. the gap to the other uh, half of this corridor of shelves, reaches the end, and then he turns around. The second he turns around, He'll be a long ways away from you, but he'll probably see the three people fucking with the crate. Okay. So. Don't have a lot of time. If he can be distracted, I recommend distracting him. All right. Distraction. But how do I explain my presence? Can I? <laughs> oh, Lord. Hmm. What? Okay, remind me, do you have you do have you do have the presence power or which is supernatural allure and attractiveness that makes people mortals tend to like you and agree with everything you say? I do. So I will do my best um Oh, I have it. I was supposed to come pick up some documents for my boss, but you didn't tell me anything, and I don't know where I am, and please, would you help me? Oh my god, I don't want to get in trouble. Okay, so that's <laughs> what you say. Okay, so as, as you, you just walk, just bold-faced walk out through into that corridor while he's walking towards you, and he's, uh, uh? And he, he goes for his gun, but I assume that you turn awe on at this point. It is free power. You don't have to spend anything. Um, Katya and Flynn, as you know, well, as she, turn, as she turns it on before she goes down there, you yourselves just all of a sudden, like, Joanne is really interesting. Uh, it's not overpowering for you, but, like, you, you, know, you know what they're doing. But I feel like Joanne was interesting before. Yeah, more. More interesting. <laughs> just really cool, kind of... Uh, graceful and and vibrant uh but this this dude like yeah he goes for his gun and then he just really looks at you and he's got, uh, uh, uh he still has his hand more loosely and the whole story says miss uh what what uh, you start saying what you said um i will um. say that this is a manipulation and persuasion roll but you add your presence to it which is a one die modifier okay so uh, da, 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 da. you'll have three dice Pers persuasion you said actually no so yeah no it would be subterfuge wouldn't it yeah yeah no Leah never mind you'll have lots of dice subterfuge and manipulation and um, add your uh Add your presence, so when you get to modifier, one. One. Okay. 
Okay, three successes. That seems to be the order of the day for you. Uh, <laughs> but that's solid for this guy, especially with the power of awe. He's just... Uh, well, of, 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 of course, I... Uh, yeah, I can... I can... I mean, I can take you to, to, to the boss upstairs, and uh, he can sort you out. I mean, I, I'm just a guard. How did you get in here? No, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I'll take you wherever you want to go. <laughs> oh, thank you. I couldn't imagine getting back without them. I would be in so much trouble. <laughs> he uh, gestures for you to follow him. Do you just... He turns his back on you. Do you just go? Yeah, I mean, why not? Let's okay. just, just take him sort of away from the corridor, maybe slow my steps deliberately so that I'm not in a particular hurry. Touch his shoulder. I'm like, oh, thank you so much for doing this. I hope I don't get you into trouble. You know? Oh, no, no. It, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Maybe. But it should be f I don't care. <laughs> You're great. <laughs> uh, he's... he. Okay. We'll leave you two he's the, his intention and stop me if you do anything but we'll get we'll do we'll deal with that as we come back to you his intention is to lead you down this corridor uh he passes across the gap and there's a guard or two that will see you but you're literally with a guy who works here so they just like eh, fuck it uh, for, for all they know you've for all they know he's snuck you in here for a lay or something and they don't care um his intention is to take you all the way to the end and then over to a staircase which will lead you up to the uh, second floor offices where the supervisor who has the computer with the information and all that stuff that you, you know, asked for uh, is. So you will eventually if you follow him all the way have to deal with that but for now uh, we'll focus on Flynn and Katia who have provided their quiet free reign. Alright. Well I... Have a combat knife with me. I'll uh, first attempt to use that to cut the straps. I'll, uh, I'll help out as well. Sort of uh, make it quicker. Do you? So you're both using knives on different straps. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's. I'll be nice. Who amongst you has more dice in a stealth pool? Let's see. Oh. Uh, three. I believe the answer is Flynn. So this is a role to determine how quietly you're doing this. So it's actually I'm gonna, you know, they're they're, they're light knives. It's still Dex and Stealth, uh, but add one die modifier for the fact that the two of you get the work done twice as quickly. Daniel, four successes. Easy stuff. You're uh, very delicate. Oh, you didn't need to roll as well, Katia. We just needed the one roll to decide. But with four successes from Flynn, uh, you, yeah, you guys are very delicate and careful. Uh, you slice the straps without making too much noise. And then there is, yeah, wooden lid. Uh, is your intention to slide it off or pick it up? And who is doing it, if not both? Well, does it look like a pickup or a slide? <laughs> Things get murky in um, the field of... Boxes? No, I was going to say vampiric strength, but I'm looking at your powers. Yeah. Yeah. It looks... I mean, you could attempt to, to, to lift it as a way of avoiding the, the, the loud sound of scraping as you slide this thing out. However, if you... Um, you, you, it would be a test of strength to see whether you managed to pick it up. What if we both lift it from, like, one to either side? Yeah, it is, like, it's facing uh, the, the, the long the long side, the long edge is on the shelf. There's nothing on top of it, so you can access both of the, the, the narrower ends by, by, I guess, reaching a little ways into the into the shelf, so it's not it's it's yeah it's oriented so you could both lift from either end. Be careful. Vision is blocked by the uh, objects on the other shelf that are mm -hmm. uh, that it's in front of. Well, I think we give that a shot and hope it's not nailed down. 
Okay. Uh, brute strength, strength plus, plus brawl. This time I'll have you both roll. No modifiers, I just want to see how both, both ends of this go. we do. Hmm. One success <laughs> for Cartier, three successes for Flynn. Uh, Flynn, it's it's working. It's working. You, you, you're, you're lifting your side. Uh, pivot! Pivot! Cartier, you're reasonably strong. However, you just didn't dance the right way. Uh, you, you, you feel a twinge in your undead back. And ooh, it makes you lose your focus, uh, and it, your side thuds. Flynn, you have half the thing in your hand. Do you? What? What do you do? It does make a thud, and you hear a huh from the other side, and then footsteps. Oh shit! Um, well, I can't use seduction. You got, you got, <laughs> the, you got the lid in your hand. Are you trying or you're not? Yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Can you see if I can lift it? Still. Okay. Do another check. But like, can I can I just peek in to see what it is quickly? Or very quickly. Um, yep. You take a peek and you see from your end uh, a pair of legs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I can I put the lid down and try and hide? You, you do whatever you want. Yeah, I'm going to put the lid down and try and hide. It's... There is no hide, really. I mean, I guess you could, like, find an empty spot in the shelf and tuck yourself there, but... Can I hide in the box? Like, can I just, like, lift it up enough and slide in and shut the, the lid? Can I hide it's... in the box? <laughs> gonna be cozy. <laughs> I... Okay. Um... Uh, what would this be? It would definitely be... We'll say, uh... We'll say dex and athletics for... Sliding your way on in. I've thought this through. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> one success <laughs> and one on a hunger die, which is a bestial failure, which contrary to how it is written, is not the best kind of failure for your purposes. Uh, let me just quickly check what I... Let, let, let me just, just do a quick uh, read so that I run this exactly. Okay, so your attempt to get in there does not work. And the reason why it does not work is because you are suddenly feeling incredibly scared. You don't know who is in this crate. You do know what happens when bodies are involved and you're the one holding the bag. You, you are feeling reminiscent of other situations in your life and uh you you want to leave you just want to leave you just want to get out of this warehouse now you will not feel good until you're in your van this does not mean that you have to immediately flee any action that you are that you take that is not towards leaving this warehouse uh, you will have a two dice penalty until you are in your van and you are not getting in that crate. Can I, like, I'm sure that there's rows of boxes and crates and, and storage stuff? You can, you can try and fold yourself up between the shelves, but Katya, what are your plans as you, again, you've got, you got seconds here as, as a guard is, mm -hmm. is trying to round mm -hmm. the corner and see what the hell happened. 
So, do I have a solid idea of which corner he's coming around? You're in long corridor with with full, full of shelving. Uh, the direction that Joanne and um, the guard <laughs> went off in uh, around the little, little uh, gap in between all of the, the shelving corridors. Um, from the left, coming in from the left and around is where you, you heard footsteps. None so on the other if side. I, if I say I wanted to wait in this corridor for him to come around and immediately grab him before he saw I was there, is that something the office above would conceivably witness? Do you mean right at the gap so as he turns the corner? Are you going to grab him? Yeah, pretty much just grab him, yank him into our into our corridor, and clamp hand over mouth, try to subdue him. The answer is yes. However, the fun thing is that by this point, Joanne's in that office, and no one's actually looking out the window. All right, then we're going to give that a shot. However, uh, you don't necessarily fully know that, so it's a question True. of... What I think I would take the risk anyway. Would feel. Because what else am I going to do? Just stand here? You, I, no. I'd, say, I'd say you'd have <laughs> enough reason to, to believe it, because you, you heard the guy say where he was taking Joanne, and the office mm -hmm. is the office. It's the only one there. So it's just a question of, do you think enough time has passed for them to get up there? And the answer is, yeah, because like, you spent time quietly soaring this <laughs> the, the, the straps off. You, mm -hmm. know. Uh, you guys made it up. Uh, Joanne, I sh uh, un unless something happened, unless Joanne did not intend to get to the office. Um. Well, I didn't originally intend to, but Maybe. I heard the thud, mm -hmm. and so I figured, well, you know, if I rush back, that's gonna be weird. So I'm just gonna keep going and roll with whatever happens. <laughs> roll wits and awareness, and we'll decide if you actually heard the commotion. Ooh, okay. If you didn't, then you will do what you originally intended, as though nothing is wrong. Awareness and wits. Uh, so I would do a wit... No, an awareness roll with wits. Yes. At wit. Okay. Three successes, we can say that you figured it out. Okay. Yep, you, you, you heard a little crate thud. Um... as you were ascending the, the, the walkways. Um, and I guess your thought then is to just not do anything, just, just keep doing. Uh, the, the guy will lead you into the supervisor's office. Uh, you still have awe up. Uh, what, do okay, so... the, what do you say to the supervisor who's like, what the hell are you doing here? He's, he's, he's older. He, he's you know, just... Uh, middle-aged manager type looking very annoyed. He's uh, looking questionably at his guard. Um, <clears throat> so I say, um, uh, what do we say? The, 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 the warehouse is Thompson's, right? Yeah. Thompson's shipping and receiving. Thompson's shipping, okay. Um, uh, Oh my god, how is it possible that I cannot literally think of any other surname starting with a T? What is my life? Oh, Tebow. Okay, so I'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry to bother you, but Mr. Tebow sent me up to just collect the manifest for the shipping shipment that came in yesterday from Thailand. We need it really urgently. Okay. Um, so you're not really... I, how much of the charm are you putting on? But convince me why I should let you use your excellent subterfuge dice and not... Well, actually, subterfuge is kind of lying, isn't it? I mean, um, I'm, I'm putting on... I'm going to, like, put the whole nine yards. Like, this is okay. really important. How could you not know about this? And then, you know, he says something, and I see... Or he says it's Thompson's, and then I see... Oh, this is Thompson's, not Tebow? Oh, my God. I, it's the wrong sign. It's dark. I'm so sorry. Wrong warehouse. I've never been here before. Like. <laughs> well, we'll see what he says in response. Uh, subterfuge <laughs> manipulation. That, that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, sub, subterfuge manipulation. Um, I will say the modifier is minus one because you shouldn't be in his office. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> Uh, manipulation minus one. Yes. Whew. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Uh, he is so sorry to 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 hear that you got the wrong uh, company, and he's like, ah, you know, it's that's just how it goes sometimes. You know, it's all these stupid names: Thompson Shipping, uh, Tebow Shipping, uh, William Shipping. Uh, yeah, uh, look, t tell, you, tell you what, I don't know where that company is, but uh, uh, my, could you just, you know, escort this, this our fine friend here outside and, and, and make sure that uh, they don't trip over any boxes? And the, the guard is very willing, because the guard thinks you're amazing and th thinks he has a shot. So uh, you're very much distracting and, and, and yeah, okay, Katia, you're good. <laughs> not that, not that you'd fully know, but like, mm -hmm. you're you're good enough that the risk you took isn't going to be a problem. Uh, so you're just going to wait, and then you're just going to grab him physically. Are you using a weapon of any kind? So what I'd like to do is uh, grab him, uh, you know, immediately cover his mouth so he can't call out, and haul him into the the corridor where he's out of sight, and ideally, I don't know, like sleeper hold until he's unconscious or. If that's a possibility, that's what I'd aim for. That will be uh, strength and brawl. Entirely right. hand to hand maneuver. And yeah, you're just trying to overpower him. Um, mm -hmm. Again, for, for those following, uh, this is not the same person that Joanne is dealing with. Um, Joanne is up on the second floor uh, doing diplomacy. Katia is on the first floor dealing with a guard who heard a noise and is trying to figure out what's wrong. Uh, Flynn, are you just letting Katia do Katia stuff? Yeah, Fl Flynn's frozen in horror. Yeah, Fl Flynn's she's upset. Got her own, she's got her own hand over her mouth and is just like, it's just frozen. I imagine you dropped the crate lid. Oh, yeah. There was another thud. Nobody else heard. Same dude still on Shall his I? way. Shall I roll? Yes. Solid. Solid. All right. Grab. <laughs> but not too loudly. Um, you know how to. You know where to put your hands to not create a lot of noise. Uh, so it's very, very mild. But he's. I mean, he's not in. He's not thrilled with his current circumstance. Uh, he's you know, trying to throw you off, but you. You get him, and you. Before too long, he's. He's sleeping. Uh, and you sh just sort of shove him in as best a spot as you can manage. I mean, if someone well, comes down this corridor, they'll know, right? Oh, what you doing? So I had a thought. I could, uh... We're taking a body out, right? You know, cover our tracks, put one back in. Okay. <laughs> Nobody will find him while we're making our escape. Do you yeah. try and rally Flynn to open the lid again? Or do you just slide it off yourself and make some noise? I'll ask her... Are you capable of assisting with this? Look, it's fine. Just, just... Can we get out of here quickly? Alright, I'll... I'll do my best to lift it off myself, I suppose. I'll help with it. I'm just... But I'm not... Uh, I, I'm very distracted. Like, I keep looking over my shoulder and, and not really putting my full effort into it. Was it same role? The, the, well, the good news is that the person who is capable of hearing you move this is no longer away, is no longer involved. Uh, neither of them are. So I am just going to say that, that it's awkward mm -hmm. and Flynn is... Uh, but you do get this lid off and you get a, a wonderful look at <laughs> what is inside uh, the crate. Let me... Um, you see... Uh, slender body uh, wearing sneakers, jeans jacket, shirt fully dressed uh, and the first thing you notice because it's really fucking obvious is a long thin wooden stake right through this body's chest the body's eyes are open staring straight up. Wide-eyed, actually, as though rather surprised by something. Uh, completely paralyzed. Now, Katia and Flynn, you know exactly what this is, uh, and I will 
elaborate just for the benefit of those watching. Um, a wooden stake in the world of darkness does not kill a vampire. It paralyzes a vampire, renders them completely immobile, almost like effectively dead. Uh, but they are awake and they are aware. They just cannot move any part of their body. They can see and hear everything that's going on. Um, it is possible, if you are staked long enough and get hungry enough, that you will fall into torpor, which is like a vampire coma. At that point, you will no longer be conscious. But, uh, yeah, there's just this... <laughs> Except without the blink. Even more. Without the blink. Yeah, Flynn, this is not nice. You don't like staked vampires. You really don't, actually. <laughs> Like she's, she's shaking now. Like she's, she's shaking and she's backing away from the crate. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, um... You gonna... interact with the body at all? You know that if you pull the stake out, the vampire will be... up and moving and animated. For yes, good or for and Ill. I don't exactly want... somebody making noise in this situation, so... My approach right now would be, let's... Let's get the body out, put the other body in, close it back up. Uh, we can, my <coughs> thought would be we can, we can unstake when we're a safe distance away, where a sudden scream would be less inconvenient. Hmm. Okay. Solid idea. Uh, Flynn, are you capable of lifting and moving these bodies, I guess is the question Katia would ask you. I'm gonna try, but I'm I'm terrified. Okay. Dex and stealth from both of you, just to see how uh, quietly this operation works. Oh my God, Flynn! <laughs> oh, well, I told you I was scared. <laughs> A messy critical. Which is the good version of your beast involving itself in your business. They're all coming back. Um, Katia, you, you find that you are able to lift the staked vampire. It's, it's weird because it's frozen, like there's no fold in him or anything. Uh, and, and you just sort of quietly lower him down. Uh, Flynn, your job was to move the unconscious guard... Um, while you do that, you hear, you hear him, and he says, look at him, he's asleep, he's right there in front of you, look at this, look at this snack, no one's going to notice. There was a dead body in there before. There can be a dead body in there again. <laughs> oh, I'd notice. I'd notice. I'm going to need you to make a willpower check to see if you can resist drinking from this body. Uh, that's uh, just the little dice next to willpower, the word willpower? Yes, your incredibly large uh, amount of willpower that you have there. Did I get a modifier? Just a little modifier? Just just a little... little yeah, you do, thing. actually, because this roll is not in uh, the effort of getting you out of the warehouse, so it's going to be a uh, minus two. Oh. I had forgotten, you idiot. <laughs> go on, go on. <laughs> Uh, oh! Hang on, let me uh, let me just let, let's get some music again for this for this moment. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> yeah! Uh, I believe in the common vernacular. <laughs> it is excellent. If you didn't feel so goddamn guilty, you are so happy as you drain the life away from this guard, and you do not stop because you hear him in your head. K 
cackling, clapping, loving it. The good news is that you have zero hunger now. You are full. The bad news is the only way to get full as a vampire is to end a life. The better news is, if there was a dead body in the crate before, there's gonna be a dead body in the crate now. Just whether that's good or not. Now, let's just take a look at our Chronicle Tenets. Collateral damage is to be avoided. I would posit that murdering a guard doing his job is probably not fair game. Does that also trigger my flaw? Yeah, I'm getting there. Um, I would also posit that certain things to do with you make you very unhappy about what you've just done. And that because of that, you will take two stains on your humanity. Don't worry, I've marked them for you. Thank you. And you will have to address this at session's conclusion. The better news is that you're, you find that your head is clearing from this. You're calm. You did not satisfy your compulsion, which normally it would still affect you, but by giving in to the urges here, I'm going to say that you are, you are yourself again. You can, uh, you can operate well. I'll be nice. Sorry, I've come back to myself? Yes. You can put the dead dude in the crate if you want, though you're probably crying about it or something. Yeah, I've got like just blood stained down my front. I've not done this prettily. Like I have, there was no dainty feeding. Oh yeah. Um, however, I will take the time to cut his throat. So then mess up the, the bite mark. So I, cause I, I'm assuming I can't heal it after he's dead. You can lick the bite mark to make it vanish just like any other. Oh, but that's, that's definitely less creepy. That's yep. the less creepy option. Yeah, no. Yeah, lick the corpse or cut the corpse's throat. It's, look, it's a lose-lose situation. I lick the corpse. Yay! It only took two hours and we got a corpse licking. Cool. <laughs> All right. Um, I never thought I'd say those words in my life, but here we are. I like to broaden your horizons. Now, after you do that, do you just put him in the crate, put the crate lid back over. I mean, there are some cut straps just hanging around. Do you, uh, leave them? Um, I put him in the crate. I, like, pull the straps out. I put them in the crate as well. Put the lid back down. I just turn around and say, I don't want to talk about it. Solid. Solid shit. Okay. Uh, now you guys need to make your way back out, uh, if you want. I mean, <laughs> I won't tell you what to do. You could live here forever if you liked, but, um, at this point, Joanne is being escorted out of the warehouse. Do you resist? Do anything? You don't know what's happening inside. No. <clears throat> but um, on the way out, I try to sort of catch a glimpse to see if I can see anything. Uh, he doesn't really take you because he's taking you directly to the side exit shelves are in the way, you're okay. not going to see anything that's happening. So there's no way to see anything. Okay. His intention is to Sorry, lead I... you out through the front gate, and then just walk away. Well. But you're alone with him for a good chunk of that. I'm not scared of him. But <clears throat> I am, however, thinking that if he takes me out and deposits me on the street, sans my accomplices, I'm going to look a little conspicuous. Also, I'm not going back to the van because dog, so... Yes. Maybe... <laughs> maybe... I, uh... drop my handbag. Oops. Oh! <laughs> Take a moment, gather my lipstick, whatever is in there, you know, slowly put it all back in. Um, Stall it out. Give them a bit more time, yeah. maybe. Hopefully. As much time as possible. Okay. I'll say you've got a bit. All right. Uh, Katia and Flynn, the operation is complete. Katia, you are carrying a staked vampire very carefully. Mm-hmm. 
This is going to have an impact on your stealthing ability. I expect it would. But that's really the only plan that we have. Is your intention to get out the way you came in? I'd like to go back out the way we came. Flynn, following? Yeah, sort of resolutely just thousand yard stare, just following. All right. No crisis of, yeah, no emotional crises like in the warehouse. Good, good idea. Uh, Dex and stealth from you both again. Katya, I am going to need you to subtract two. Mm-hmm. How does the person with six die do worse than the person with three? I flipped in the blood that I'm trailing everywhere. Admittedly, I should have taken one from you for that as well, but I won't, because it's too late. Um, you, Katia, are fine. Uh, Flynn, as you get out through the side door, it's been a bad day. It's been, it's been, it's been an incredibly shit day. You forget about the fact that the door is supposed to close quietly. <laughs> Clunk. And the guard that is patrolling back and forth whips around and just looks at the two of you and the body over Katia's shoulder that is literally st ramrod stiff, actually, so I don't know, it's probably in both your hands, and is just... What? Can I try and intimidate him? You do whatever you want. So far, all he's managed to do is... Go on. How far away is he? Uh, like, you'd have to run, like, for a solid two seconds to be, point, uh, like, you know, able to grab, grab him. I'll give it a go and see if I can, like, grab him by his throat, pin him against the wall. Can I try that first? I mean, that's not intimidation. That's very physical. So, yes, you can, uh... Uh, hmm. It's two things. It's... Okay, firstly, dex and athletics to see how quickly you get to him. It's four successes. Okay. As I mentioned, this guard was kind of shit. That is enough to get to him before he has recovered from his shock to react to you, which means you do not have to do an opposed roll. You just get to strength and brawl it. All right. In that case, I'll, I'll, I'll rush up to him, grab him by the neck, pin him against the wall, just say, right, you saw nothing. You know nothing. In fact, you didn't even get up this morning. And I'm just standing there with blood dripping down my face, on my <laughs> chin, on my chest. I'm looking a little bit crazed. Like, this has very clearly been a bad night for me. First, brawl and strength. You're getting ahead of yourself. We need to make sure the grab works before you can say okay. anything to him. Okay, just, just roll, sorry, what in strength? Brawl. Because gotcha. you're using your hands. Three? Three is enough. You grab him, slam him against the warehouse wall. Now, I would like to remind you that there is a thing you can turn on that will help your intimidation out a fucking lot. Yes. It is there free. is. free. It is called Daunt. It is the opposite of awe. Where uh, Joanne at once became very alluring to your eyes, Katia. Now, Flynn, uh, with the aid of the bloodstains, looks fucking terrifying. Um, <laughs> and that's to you. Imagine how immortal must feel. Uh, ooh, just, no, you don't want to be like, you were in this person's van! Anyway. Um, yeah, I'll turn that on. Yeah, uh, so we're looking at manipulation, intimidation with... Uh, Modifier of two for your presence. So I just use manipulation and intimidation. How do I do that one? Well, you go to your skills, you find intimidation, and you hit to the roll next to intimidation. Yep, yeah, sorry, I didn't know manipulation was in there. And modifier was what, two? Two. Ah. Ah. Look. There. I was just doing the count. But yeah, uh, manipulation, era, intimidation, plus two. That's a three right there. As I've stated, three successes is enough for this idiot. So, um, 
He's... <laughs> How keen is your sense of smell? Oh, no. I'd say it would be pretty. It'd be, it'd be up there. You know what he's doing. Yeah. Right, um, it's a good sign for your purposes. Uh, do you just leave him gibbering and fucking bolt back to your uh, hole in the fence? Yes. Okay, Joanne, um, you're not going to see them. You're at the front. You, you you finish your stalling, but eventually he does, as much as he's captivated by you, he's also scared of his boss a little. So, like, he does take you through the front gate, wish you well, ask for your phone number. Uh, which I decline as it's a work phone, and I wouldn't want to. He, he grumbles a bit, Dad but... He, like, shrugs and fucks off back into the warehouse. Uh, okay, so... You're out the front. The other two are sneaking out the back. Um, you don't... Neither of you know where the other is. So... Okay, well, Joanne, what would, you, first... what would be your idea at this point? Because you said you won't go back to the van. I'm on the street in front of the warehouse. So the first thing I would do is check to look if the guard has gone straight back in. If he has, then I can walk around the corner to the van. No problem. Yeah, he's just if gone. If he has not, oh, he's gone straight in. I got caught. He just went in. Nothing. I... There was no uh, no real disturbance. No alarm has been raised. Some fucking how. Uh, every, no one. <laughs> there's no immense. Like there's no immediate problems. He just walks his ass back into the place. Uh, meanwhile, right. do the two of you just get? through the fence and make your way to the van? That's what I would do. Okay. I, I'm gonna, yeah. gonna, for the sake of expediency, say that that works out just fine. Uh, we've, we've been in here long enough. Um, you will eventually, Joanne, see Flynn, Katia, Katia with a body, uh, heading to the van. At which point I assume that you go to them. Unless you don't. I do. Flynn. Because the fuck? <clears throat> Are those legs? That's a whole person, actually. They don't have the crate, they just have a person. Okay, for a crate? What is this? So I definitely hurry over as quickly as possible and stop short at, well, what I can now see is a body with a stake. Very blank stare. Flynn, who is positively terrifying, she has and the, the vampire thing of, of resting bitch face. That's that's what Flynn's wearing right now. Rest and bite face. And blood. And blood. Yeah. Uh, uh, Want to catch me up? <laughs> Got the he box. was in the box. This was in the box. He was. Nothing else. No note. No book bag. No satchel. No Carry on, nothing. Just. Well, I haven't searched him for identification. Huh. Okay. Well, then I feel like that would be something that would be useful. Pro probably not in the road, there, guys. Maybe in the back of the van would be a good. Well, I, I, I would have him in the back of the van before I did anything. <laughs> Assuming Flynn opened the van, because I'm guessing Flynn is still probably a little like. No, Flynn Let's opens go. the back of the van, but it doesn't help. She goes to the driver's seat and opens the glove box, and she's looking for wet wipes. That's that's what she's doing. Okay. You um, are not going to be able to stop yourself from looking like you've been in a fight, but you're not going to look as fresh, lee-blooded, as, as you did. You can clean your face, you can't clean your clothes. Yeah, no, I'll cl clean my face and my hands, and All right. put my hair back up again, sort of neaten myself up. Yes. Um, you... You lower the body into the back of the van. You have to, uh, or rather, Pasha, the doggo, raises up and. Mm? Good, good job. <laughs> just he's he's given this. He's he's just sniffing. He's just sniffing all around this mm -hmm. this this body. As as I'm sure you would kind of be fine with him doing. Like he, he he's checking t t to see if there's anything he should alert your attention to. Mm -hmm. He knows how to do that. Well, um, I'll give him a moment to check before I consider unstaking. There's nothing smelly. There's nothing smelly. Mm. 
Do you search his person? I'll, I'll say to Joanne, he could tell us who he is if we take this out. Uh, well, that could go one of two ways. That could go fairly without incident. I mean, <laughs> who knows how long ago he's been staked? Who knows where he comes from? What language does he speak? I mean, waking up in a strange van with a giant dog and three other vampires would not be terrifying at all in fact so no i i correct my statement they are not two possible ways there's only one possible way this could go and i don't think it's a good one um does he have pockets a wallet anything that's that we might out. plenty first? of pockets plenty of pockets you search <clears throat> it's not difficult to search an unconscious well paralyzed person um at least in terms of the pockets that you can see. Uh, you do not find much, though. You find a pack of cigarettes. Ten smokes in the pack. Uh, you find a cigarette lighter that looks old. Uh, it's got a sort of spade pattern engraved on it. And you also find a USB stick. It's one of those ones where you can write a label on it. And the label reads, For the Prince of Shadeport's ears only, comma, jackass! Exclamation point. I would suggest we put everything back in his pockets and deliver him. Uh, th this seems like the most logical way forward. Stake intact. Okay. He's gonna... Assuming nothing goes wrong along the way. <laughs> he staked. He can't, uh, he can't disagree. Alright. Can, can someone cover his eyes, like, with a cloth or something? It's creepy. <laughs> Alright, we'll, we'll say that you guys <clears throat> agree to leave him staked, and now you head to Reed Hills, to Juliet's mansion. Uh, we'll, we'll get, we'll move to our next major scene if that's alright, if there's not anything super pressing that people want to do first. Let's see a bit. I'm not going to put music on on the way there. It's just silence and I'll just say it could have been worse. Okay. It could have exploded. So you take the drive. And I oh, yeah. put my handbag over his eyes because I don't have a jacket. Just, you know. It's good enough. <laughs> don't want to upset Flynn. I like Flynn. I want to try and help. Okay. You guys take the long journey out of the industrial docks. Rough. Actually, fuck it. One more thing before you leave. Joanne. Your wits and your awareness. Yes? Roll them. Your awareness and your wits. Alright, let's do this. No modifiers? None. Success is four. You don't know where. You don't know who. Someone sees you. Nothing's happening. But you just kind of feel it. Somewhere in the dark. <clears throat> well, I, uh, shake it off, clear my throat, and let's get the fuck out of here. Don't tell them? No. Okay away. Nothing happens. You're not stopped. You, uh... No, I'm, I'm crazy. I don't, I don't know. Like, this... You know where to go. You direct, or you, you rather you give the address to Flynn, and she GPSs it, because, you know, it's 2021. Um, 
and you head out, as I say, of the of the industrial coastal area, and in towards Snobland. This interests you, Cartier and Flynn. Camarilla Prince having a mansion in um the rich hilly territory. That's not what's interesting. Although a lot of them do prefer to live where they work, and they tend to work in central business districts. What interests you is that you've been invited there and not to not to a more central location, be it an office or a house, but pr presumably when a Camarilla prince lives in a place like this, they do their business somewhere else, and if they do their business somewhere else, would they not have invited you there? It's just, it's, 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 it's odd, it's unusual. But again, this is an unusual place. You pull into a lovely, fabulous mansion. It's obviously a closed gate with a doorman who uh, recognizes Joanne in the shotgun seat and says nothing, just opens it up, waves you in. Uh, there's a wonderful front garden with a lot of places to park. Just, you know, the, the, the road winds around in one of those big circles where cars can congregate with a fountain in the middle and then the house. Way better place than uh, you ever thought you'd be living in, Joanne. But this is where you've been living ever since it happened. Good and the bad. You don't get free reign of the place. You have the places you're allowed to go to, and the places you are not. Out the front, leaning against a lovely pillar, is... Well, you've met him before, Joanne, but when you met him... Ugliest human being you have ever seen in your life! He has no ears at all. Uh, he has... His nose is, like, sunken, caved in. Uh, he just, just sharp teeth. He looks like a monster. Uh, he is a member of Clan Nosferatu. The vampires who wear their curse on their face. Uh, he explained it to you. It's not nice, but where other kindred have their curses more internally... Theirs is very visible. They have to live a quiet, careful life, because even being seen out in the open by regular people can be a masquerade breach in the wrong circumstances. Depends on how badly the ugly stick hit you when you turned. And for Mikhail, it came swinging. But you like him, in a way. He's a bit scary, but he's, he's friendly. He's the sheriff of the Shadeport Camarilla Court. Flynn, you don't know who he is. Katya, you do. As you guys, as the van pulls up, he, uh, <clears throat> moves from his resting position, waves, he, uh, you know, nods to Joanne. This is successful mission, little one. I hope. Well... That will depend on the prince's face when we walk. <laughs> of course, of course. You, I do not believe I know. This would, of course, be the part where you corrected it. He's looking at Flynn and wants to know who you okay. are. Okay, <laughs> I just say Flynn. Flynn. Didn't know me. I was just Flynn. Flynn. Mm. You look like you have had not the best of times. My name is Mikhail Leskov. I am the Sheriff of Shadeport. I hope that your time here is fruitful, fun, and that I do not get the order to kill you. I would hate for that to happen. Thanks, two of us. At this point, I assume the van doors are opening and Katia is coming out of the back? Mm-hmm. With or without Pasha? Oh, with. Okay. Mikhail, actually, how long would you say Pasha has been with you? Let's say a good ten years or so. They'll have met. His face lights up. Katya! <laughs> I imagine you took care of these two. I mean, no offense to you, Flynn, but, uh... 
I trust the people. We all came back in one piece. Mm. Flint is drugs. Pasha, Pasha, it has been too long. He leans down and, you know, sort of saying hello. Um, Pasha would have met Mikhail, not not a whole lot, mm -hmm. but enough to be familiar. Uh, how would Pasha react? Pasha would be friendly. Mm -hmm. He holds out his hand. Um, but then, then he does something interesting, something you don't you haven't seen him before. Uh, he starts just sort of barking. Not Pasha. The sheriff. He just starts sort of making... <laughs> <laughs> Mikhail just shakes his head, rolls his eyes. He says he is sick and fucking tired of waiting for you to learn how to talk to him. He just yeah. looks at you as though you have done wrong. Mm-hmm. Some year. Katya, Katya, Katya. I can help you with this, you know. It'll take time, but I can um, shave off the difficulty, so to speak. Just uh, mm. a few free nights here and there. We can talk about it. I can, uh, if you wish. Most gracious, thank you. Mm, we can talk about that later. All right, all right, all right. I'm told to expect you have item for, for Her Majesty the Prince. Uh, is it in the, the van? <coughs> well, it is. <coughs> Kyle? Good. Item may not be the best description for it, oh, but for I'm sure sake. you will not be surprised. Hopefully less than I was. I've seen a lot of shit, my dear. Precisely why I'm thinking you may be able to make more sense of it than I. He turns the corner. Uh, do you lead him and open the van for him to look in, or do you just let him? I, I do. I lead him, uh, open it up gesture vaguely okay he looks inside there. he looks at the staked vampire hmm who the fuck is this uh, I was hoping you'd know so you didn't put the stake in him nope he this was not be nice. he was staked when you found him and he is the delivery. He appears to be. We live in interesting and I have times. A moment of panic because did I check the number on the crate? It did. We get the right. It has to be the right one. How many crates of steak vampires? Could Are you saying be? these words aloud? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he looks at you and says, "Little one, it was the right crate." Even if it wasn't the right crate, it was the right crate. Well, yes, let's go with it was the right crate. <laughs> okay, well, your instructions were to ascertain that it was not dangerous. Well, keeping it um, immobilized is one way to ascertain that. But we need to figure out whether he's going to go mad and kill all of us when we pull it out. No real way to tell how old this particular specimen is <laughs> without asking oh and i do believe he is awake he leans forward right in front of the staked vampire's face and he says hello my name is sheriff mikhail leskov i keep the peace in the city of shadeport if keeping the peace involves separating you into pieces i will not hesitate i wish you a welcome stay here and that your time in shadeport is fruitful but if my prince demands that I kill you, you will be quite fucked. Pleasantries out of the way. I think the three of you should go inside, have your meeting, let them know what the fuck is going on, but before we bring an unknown vampire into the prince's house, for courtesy, we will make some... have some checking done. Yeah. Pulls out a phone. Makes a phone call. Uh, uh, he could hear us the whole time? Oh, yes. He could hear every word you said. I hope you didn't mention how badly he smells. I can get away with it because I can fucking take him. But you? Hmm. <clears throat> hello. Okay. Gwendolyn, Sorry hello. Yes, unfortunately, we're going to need some of your bullshit tonight. Hmm. 
I'm not going to fucking tell you that over the phone, you... F well, I would be more than willing to tell Her Majesty why you are not offering your services as her herald tonight. Because you're at a party and it's very important that you get your freak on. However, I recommend you arrive promptly. <sighs> <laughs> That's Vidania. Go inside. Meet the prince. Tell her you performed admirably, under my expert opinion, which she values very much. And Katya! Please, be nice. I, I, I don't... If she orders me to kill you, I mean... <laughs> You understand. I expect it should not come to that. Mm, good. He waves you away. There are gentlemen in suits at the front doors who allow you into the uh, entrance hall. They direct you to a small waiting room where uh, a man that only Joanne recognizes is standing just sort of contemplating the artwork on the walls. He is also wearing a suit. It's a nicer suit than the uh, security, uh, well, the you know, butler, whatever suits. Uh, short black hair. He, he's he's young looking. Looks very stern. He has a pair of glasses on, and you know he's a kindred. And whether you need glasses on as a kindred or not depends on whether you needed glasses when you returned. But quite often, glasses are worn for masquerade reasons. So the fact that he's got them on in the prince's house is interesting. Um, he looks at you. Nods at Joanne. Looks at the other two. Looks at the blood on Flynn's shirt. Flynn also looks at the blood on Flynn's shirt. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody was. Um, oh, that's... Uh, I, I, I will amend. Uh, uh, when Mikhail um, <coughs> looked at the... Uh, Looked at the blood. Uh, what, what, what he said specifically to that was, "You look fucking amazing, by the way." <laughs> but anyway, uh, so this, this fellow it doesn't matter. Uh, th th this fellow he just sort of looks through you up and down and says, "Child, you return alive, much to my shock." I certainly hope I do not appear that incompetent. <laughs> you are a month from the bite, my dear. It is customary not to release a child until they have been carefully watched for a year or more. You are not ready for this, and yet you have been sent out anyway. I do not approve, but nonetheless. He takes in the two of you. I was under the impression Mikhail's duty was to dispose of our garbage, not invite them into our living room. To whom do I owe the displeasure? Flynn is going to just, like, flash some fang. <laughs> like, she's being rude, and she's just going to... Once again, just give her one, one word answer, just Flynn, and nothing else. Similarly, the only thing I will offer is my name. Is Pasha with you? You were not told to leave Pasha out if you decided to bring Pasha in. Then he's with me. He looks at the dog, grimaces and just... <sighs> I am Jacob Thredson. I am the Seneschal of Shadeport. Nice to meet you, Joshua. <laughs> Quite. The prince's words are the only words which will protect you from me. I do not agree with harboring Gangrel and Bruja rabble. We cast you out of the Camarilla for a reason. It was your own doing. And if it were my city, we would uphold that decree. But fortunately for you, you are welcome here. For now. Her Majesty will be with us momentarily. I would ask you not to break anything. 
I know you, Bruja, like to do that. I have to take him off. <laughs> he just smirks again, shakes his head disdainfully. The room is real nice. Uh, the furniture is old. Like, it's sort of turn of the century, and I mean 19th to 20th, kind of uh, general aesthetic. Like, it's it's typical for an older kindred. They don't they don't like to look modern, um, but Threadson, the the seneschal, is dressed very modernly. He's just in a you know a, a, a nice but but nondescript uh, business suit. Eventually, out from a corner, and as as uh, as she arrives, uh, the seneschal bows and glares at the three of you. Joanne, would you bow? This is your sire. I... Oh, shit. Um, I wouldn't because it's not something that I was ever really accustomed to doing and I often forget, like, social protocols and things like that. So I kind of just... Jacob thinks you should and has reminded you of this sternly on many occasions. Uh, Juliet has never said a word about it. Um... As for the two of you, Flynn and Katia, when you see Jacob do this, do you... or do you not? Absolutely. Even a dog has manners. Okay, okay. I don't. I just uh, flick a bit of a salute in her direction. Just like a, a jaunty salute and leave it. The, the Seneschal glares, but he says nothing as the prince enters. My friends, be at I... ease. Welcome to my city. I am Juliet Hammersley, Prince of Shadeport. I would like to know what happened tonight. I see that you bear no item. Was it dangerous? Did you have to dispose of it? She's not asking for your <laughs> names. Perhaps she already knows them. Flynn will look at Joanne. I look at Flynn and I sort of take the lead here. I look at the Seneschal and have a little internal giggle because everything that pisses him off amuses me. Um, <laughs> and uh, I say to Juliet, <clears throat> uh, well, dangerous? I'm not sure. Uh, as we speak, Mikhail is assessing and investigating. Uh, interesting, certainly. Unexpected, definitely. But we have the package if you could call it that at this point Jacob interjects with you should refer to the sheriff by his proper title child which is immediately cut in by Prince Juliet who says and you will not correct my child when I am present to do so myself if I find it worth doing Jacob and he just folds <laughs> nothing just <laughs> I especially giggle <clears throat> My dear, we will wait on Mikhail then. Well done. I'm proud of you. As you take in the prince, uh, Flynn and, and Katya, she is dressed well, but again, it's, it's sort of in, in keeping with the uh, aesthetic. It's, 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 she's wearing a dress, an older style dress at this point. Um, She has a kind of, like, sort of hawkish kind of face. Very, uh, angles. Uh, but, you know, she's... She looks roughly 40s-ish in, in terms of, uh, uh, <laughs> physical, um, age and skin. And, uh, she is blonde, and she seems to be holding something behind her back, which she has not yet seen fit to reveal to you. Um, she says, Flynn of the Bruja. And Katya, of Clan Gangrel. She looks to Pasha. I'm afraid I have not made your acquaintance, but you are also welcome to my house. You have both been recommended to me, by different sources, as valuable, capable kindred. This is a dangerous place, this city of dread. 
we will have a difficult time securing our control here. There are many opportunities for you here to succeed and to fail, to be respected and to be shunned. I would invite you to this court and I would advise you not to betray it. She sort of smiles, just just a little bit, as as, as though uh, as though you would never uh, dare. She pauses for for if either of you choose to speak. Now Flynn will bow. <laughs> she chuckles a little, nods. Miss Flynn. Yes, your majesty. A gift for you. She uh, pulls out her hand, and there is a sheet of paper with a highly detailed sketch upon it. This sketch is of you, unbloodied, holding the crate lid. You have never seen yourself drawn quite so accurately. This is you down to the finest detail. She smiles as she hands it to you. I, I thank you. It's, I, I, it's, it's an amazing piece of work. Food for thought, I think. But worry not. <laughs> Flint's worried. Hmm. Okay, so it's going to take a bit before Mikhail arrives, and uh, Juliet says that the main the main meat of the meeting, so to speak, will happen after we have looked at this object. Uh, she, she's happy to wait, so she offers you refreshments in the form of people. She explains that uh, you know any any of her um, staff can be uh, supped from. They are all quite under control and uh, willing for whatever you may need if any of you are hungry. However, I will remind you that uh, nobody is hungry enough for it to do any good without you killing someone. Yeah, Flynn's going to politely decline. She's already eight. Yeah. I see. She threw it up on bread. Okay. With with that, though, she, she leaves you for a bit and she says, uh, "Let's uh, please wait uh, until... Mikhail arrives. Um, he does eventually, you see him coming through the door, alone with the body over his shoulder. Uh, the prince is alerted. She returns. She just sort of whew, takes it in. She says to uh, Joanne, says, I would like to unstake him in my office. Joanne, Mikhail, accompany me. If the rest of you could wait out out here. Uh, Jacob makes a move to go with her, and she says, "No, no, please, please entertain our guests." <laughs> and you guys go in uh, to the office. <laughs> it is not the room from the beginning yep. of the session with all the sketches. No, it's a it's a, it's a proper office um, with another with a, with a desk, uh, bookshelves, a lot of empty space. Um, Mikhail just ungently dumps the body. He says, Tremir checked. No magic. Thirteenth generation. I can fucking take him. If the need arises. Also this. He holds up the USB stick for the prince's ears only. This. Might be wise to listen to it before we yank it the yank, eh? I agree. Should I, uh, you know, ask if, if he should take Joanne and leave because it's for the prince's ears only? She says, no, no, you, you, you may listen. So, uh, this office is not too far removed from the room in which Flynn and Katya are waiting. Uh, just quickly... No, neither of you have any abilities that might be used to listen in. So, 
uh, Joanne, the Prince, Mikhail, and the body on the slab will hear the playing of this audio message as it's inserted into a laptop and played. <clears throat> first things fucking first, if uh, you're listening to this and you are not Juliet Hammersley, Prince of Shadeport, you might want to hit the old stop button there. Otherwise, mm, bad things may happen to you. <laughs> we clear? Last chance. All right. Ahoy there, your high and mightiness! <laughs> Congrats on the promotion, Julie. You might just about be the first goddamn Camarilla Prince not to be a flaming asshole. Jury's out on if you stay that way, but I'm rooting for you. <laughs> anyway, if you're listening to this, maybe the kid's awake, maybe he's not. But the lick lying in that crate right there is your ticket to even Stevens, as far as our little favor is concerned. No more embarrassing debt owed to the big bad Anarch. It sounds good, right? All you gotta do, give him a place in your fancy schmancy operation, room to breathe and grow, and for fuck's sake, do not ask him any goddamn questions. Now, I know that may sound scary, but I'm telling you, it's for his sake. He ain't here to hurt you. He ain't here to fuck you over. You got my word. And I'm not asking for ongoing special treatment for the kid either. Just, just a fresh start, eh? Clean slate. If he fucks up from here on out, you do whatever the fuck you have to do. We're done. Anyway, best of luck, Julie. I, I hope you can run things the way you told me you could. If not, we might be seeing each other somewhere down the line. And Julie, you don't want that. Click. Juliet blinks, looks to Mikhail, looks to you, Joanne. She walks over to you, reassuring, smiling, looks you dead in the eye and says, You will not speak of what you heard here. Not a word. What did we hear? I believe I heard uh, you listening. You can feel that she is asserting her will on you. Do you attempt to resist it? No. You would not be able to talk about this if you tried. Unless you tried very hard. But that's okay because you you trust your sire. Okay. Mm. Okay. At Juliet's directive, Mikhail moves over slowly, carefully. First of all, he says to the body, it would be better if you did not make a fuss, my friend. He slowly, carefully pulls out the stake. The vampire's eyes blink for the first time in a while. And then he is able to speak. Smokes. Where did you put them? Oh, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> of course. Um, right here, right here. He hands you your packet of cigarettes. You're not going to, are you? <laughs> what do you mean? Where's my, where's my lighter? <sighs> he hands I that to you as well. Through my... Oh, he took it all. <laughs> he gives it back. <laughs> He, Nula, like, well, the person yet to be named, but clearly visible on the screen with the name, pulls out the cigarette lighter, flips it open, tries to uh, light up a flame, but as, as, the, as the spark strikes and the flame lights up, he suddenly flicks back, scared of the flame. Huh! That's... In fact, wrong. yes, Joanne, you also. <laughs> oh God, it's a tiny, teensy, tiny flame. Um, but fire bad for vampires. Every vampire in the room, uh, with the exception of Mikhail, takes a solid back step. Prince included. Just, mm, mm, but it, 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 it's out fast enough that none of you have to roll. Uh, Mikhail's eyebrow raises. 
That's the extent of his reaction. Hmm. Is something wrong with the uh, lighter? Something wrong with this? What, what did you do to this? We didn't do anything to you. Let me try to understand, friend. You are attempting to have a smoke, yes? Yeah. But yeah, the flames. I had one for ages. The flames are terrifying. The flames terrify you. <laughs> well, that one certainly did. They terrify us all. I can spoil it for you. If you were to take a puff of that, it would not taste nice. In fact, practical demonstration, best way to learn. Hand, hand, hand. If you want to smoke, hand. I, well, I need something. If I can't smoke. He takes your lighter. He takes the smokes. He turns his back on everybody. And when he turns back around, there is a lit cigarette which he hands to you. <sighs> <coughs> yeah, good. Yeah, that's exactly what you do, yes. It's horrible. You just immediately coughing, fit, spluttering. Uh... Uh, he quickly tosses the cigarette on the ground and stomping it out. But I'm not having any of that. Yes. I understand. It's been a long time since I've enjoyed the taste of vodka firsthand. <laughs> However... This is your new way of life, my friend. Welcome to the ranks of the undead. I, I assume you know some things. You, oh, but, no questions, no questions, I forgot. The prince at this point speaks uh, up. What is your name? Uh, uh, he glances around instinctively, checking, checking the surroundings, seeing uh, only the handful of people around the room. It said, quickly states, it's no, no lie. No lie, yeah. No lie. Welcome to Shadeport, no lie. You have a very kind benefactor. I have been instructed. I mean, you heard the tape. You were, you're awake. You've, you've heard everything. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I have been instructed to see that your stay here is a pleasant one. Are you willing to work for your place here? Well, define work. <laughs> that depends on your skills, but generally you do whatever your prince desires, and that would be me. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't think I have a lot of choices here. There are always choices. Most of them aren't very good. Well, I... Will I be working alone? No, that would be a terrible idea. I have an idea of who I will assign to accompany you. It seems as though you have a lot to learn. Uh, well, as long as you don't make it the crew out there strip searching me all the way to, during the uh, during the van ride here. I, 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 uh, so sorry about the purse. She smiles. I think you will find them to be acceptable companions once the ice has broken. Oh god, what the hell happened here? Did someone drop out? Yes. No! <laughs> Everything. Uh, <laughs> Otherworldly experience. <laughs> yes. The, the problem is that you're gone. Hang on, I'm gonna need to... Oh! You're back! Okay, I don't need to change anything. Perfect. Yeah. The problem with Discord camera stuff is that when someone leaves the call, everything goes to shit, no matter who it is. Even if it's uh, even if it's our Flynn who doesn't have a camera set up, it'll still move everything. All right. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, it is amazing that it took this long for something, for someone to have a, a problem. Uh, nonetheless, uh, what was the last thing you well, said? Uh, I was talking about how I don't want to work with these, and you were about to say something about acceptable. That mm. was the last word. She says, I would like you to listen to me very closely. She looks you in the eye. I would appreciate it if you did not talk about your friend Jack. You can feel her exerting her will uh, on you. Do you wish to resist this? Well, I... I, I, I dare question it. No, I mean, I, do you I, wish I, to resist what she is doing that well, is beyond the pale of normal stuff. I, I, I dare try then, yes. Okay, roll your intelligence plus your resolve. Two attributes. Uh, yeah, you, you can click on either one and then add the other. Oh. I would like to remind you that there is a small no hole matters. in your chest. You have sustained two superficial damage from it. Successes too. Not. Not a lot. Not a lot with hole in my chest. Well, the hole in the chest doesn't really affect it, but your three hunger does because you've been, <laughs> you've been, you've been, you've been lying in that slab uh, in that crate for two days now. Um, you are. I, I suddenly feel weak. No, you're fine. I, I feel weakened by the mere presence of her. Yeah. Okay, so you, for the next little while at least, if you are of a mind to tell anybody about the bizarre encounter that you had with a man named Jack, you won't be able to bring the words out of your mouth. However, it will not last forever. She looks at you, she looks deeply into your eyes. If, if, if you don't turn away, she says, Joanne, I do believe this young one may be of our clan. And at that point, her demeanor changes. You. She just sort of stops for a second. It is very important that you came to this city. You are here for a reason, do you know that? Uh, not very well briefed on this, no. <laughs> she takes your hands. I want you to listen very carefully, not to me. I, I want to know if you can hear it. The voice of the city. Mm -hmm. Can you hear the, the voice of the city? His eyes and uh, concentrates on his ears. Okay. Taking it rather uh, literally. Roll your. Roll your composure and your awareness and add two because you have two points of the Auspex discipline. Uh, You're not using a power, but it's helping. Yeah, uh, awareness and composure. Hmm. Yes. Oh, there, there's the awareness. Yeah. And add two. Yeah. Okay. That is four successes. Uh, that one on the hunger die is technically a bestial failure, but the way that works is that it only counts if the roll itself is a complete failure. A bestial failure on a overall success, completely ignored. Which is good, because you didn't fail. You listen, everything goes quiet. Mikhail sort of looks like he wants to say something, but the pr a glance at the prince and he doesn't. And then it happens. You hear singing in your head. A song you may know, may not. A cappella. No, no accompanying music you hear. I want to wake up from this horrible dream. 
I want to open up my eyes and find life's not as it would seem. I want to wake up from this horrible dream. I want to open up my eyes and find life's not as it would seem. I never felt like I belong here. With these creatures so depraved Now if only I could find a way out of this place I could finally plan my escape And wake up Sing it You heard it, it. You heard the <sighs> Yes Yes, I'm very glad you came here, Nulai. This will be... This will be quite something. You will have my support. And as she turns from you and lets your hands go, something else happens. You're familiar with this. It's happened once or twice since... since you woke up different. You see in your mind's eye a hammer... And there is string winding itself around the handle of the hammer. And then around the hammer itself. It's a you know, construction hammer, not a not, not Mjolnir. Um, just just covering this hammer. Squeezing it. And then the hammer, which was previously floating in endless space, just drops. And it lands in a bucket of blood. And that's it. That's what you see. Uh, any, any unnatural way for me to interpret that? Sometimes instincts come and try and guide you. But right now you're just you're just seeing what you see. You you won't forget it. I will. Uh, I suggest you note it down. I will probably note it down in some way myself. Uh, you know, in a in a manner that you can see between sessions. But mm, that is that is the impression you get as the prince turns away from you. You can uh, keep it to yourself or not. Uh, Nulai will take a short moment to even process what he just saw, mm. what he just witnessed. What is this? Are you all right? So, sorry, I just... I saw a hammer. <laughs> and, uh, and blood. Juliet Hammersley is your prince. That might be a bit on the nose, but you were looking at her when you went crazy. We do not use that word here. My, my apologies. What does it mean? It's your fucking why, brain, why? friend. The curse of our clan, and I do not wish to alarm you, Nulai. Do, do you know what a Malkavian is? Uh, Nulai is completely dro <laughs> drawing blanks. He mm. cannot even recall ever hearing the word Malkavian. Every kindred mm. is a member of a clan. The person, your sire, who bit you, passes the clan onto you. Just as Joanne here was bit by a Malkavian, <laughs> and I was bit by a Malkavian, so too were you. And every clan carries a curse. Certainly fucking does. Mikhail over there wears his curse on his face. Ours, further inside. Some call us the Clan of the Moon, or the Oracles. Others call us the Jesters. Unfavorably, some call us the Lunatics. We see beyond what the others see. It can be a blessing or a curse. I will not ask you to share what you see, but... I will certainly listen if you decide to. 
in future. Do these visions, do they mean anything? When we are lucky, they give us the warnings we need before they come to pass. When we are unlucky, they lead us down a dark path. The voice of the city, however, it is different. I do not know if non-Malkavians hear it too, but it is not the same. For the record, Joanne, you've never had a vision. You've heard the voice, wondering. but you never had a vision. The voice? You mean uh, the singing? Yes. I have See. known Malkavian visions to lead their seers astray, but I have never known the voice of the city not to speak truth in its song. I suggest we return to the others and wrap this up, but you are welcome here, Nulai. Just behave. Hmm? Thank you. I uh, gesture to Juliet to ask if we could have a moment once of course. Nulai and Kyle have left. Uh, Mikhail offers to take Nulai away. Uh, we will do this, and then we will see what happened to the other two while this went on. But yes, uh, Juliet. So, just to check, so like Juliet has wanted me to hear the voice before, but I've always been sort of unsure of it, right? Of whether what I'm hearing is what she... <laughs> yeah, but you heard it today. Yes. So that, okay, so I just want to make sure that I was on the same page there. So I um, tell her that while we were waiting in the limo, I know that I heard the, the, the song of the city today for the first time. And it was so clear and, and uh, memorable. Is there any import I should take from that? You tell her the exact lyrics that you heard and uh, being resourceful, she goes to her computer and types them in. Um, you read it, uh, the song is called Blood on My Name, which, yeah, that's what you heard, seemed seemed like a title, uh, by the Brothers Bright. And, I mean, you can look up the full... So it's the specific part that you heard. Uh, obviously, when the fires have surrounded you is very fucking concerning. Um, but, like, to, to, to you, she says... It takes time to figure out what the voice means, but it sounds like a song of great intensity, great danger and violence. I would ask you to be very careful, my dear. Hmm. While I have you, this is very important. When we go out there, I am going to release you from my protection, and I am going to have you form a coterie with the two you retrieved Nulai with and Nulai himself. Are you certain I'm ready for this? Always, my dear. But others may not. I, will I try not to chose you because the voice in the city told me, you see. Just as it told me the value of this fellow in the box. You... I'm asking a lot of you, and I am so sorry. But if you wish to gain respect in this world, I must not be seen as doting upon you. If you truly need my support, you will have it in an instant, but once you leave here with them, for public appearances, for all intents and purposes, you will be your own kindred. You can trust them. If you trust me. I trust you, my prince. And I will not disappoint you. I know you will not. 
my child. She smiles and, uh, this, this depends on you, but, um, in the past, have you allowed her to hug you? On occasion, yes. She, uh, she, she attempts now. She's always, whenever you've not wanted it, she has not forced the issue as many sires perhaps would. I allow it. Okay. Evening's events have left me feeling somewhat disconcerted, mm. so it is comfort. You're gonna do great. She whispers in your ear. And unless you have more questions of her, uh, you would you would head out at this point. It is okay. Off. Katia and Flynn and Jacob, such vibrant company. Um. Jacob Threadson, the Seneschal, is in absolutely no desire to make conversation while you wait out what's uh, going on in the office. Um, do either of you, or are you all just sort of awkward silencing it? Well, I would check on Flynn, just ask simply, are you feeling well? In control? Uh... Flynn's sitting on a very expensive chair with her feet up on the coffee table, staring at Jacob. And she just nod and say, Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Feeling uh, full. <laughs> okay. At this point, not too long into your wait, uh, one of the house staff walks in looking sort of nervous. Uh, he looks at Jacob and says, uh, m m m Mr. Seneschal, sir, there, there, there's uh, another man here. He, um, uh, he, he, uh, no one else is expected tonight. Why was a man let in? Uh, I, he just, he kind of, um, he said his, his name was, uh, Mr., um, Mr. Crimson. The man who walks in is well-dressed. He's wearing a jacket and a fedora and a vest. Glasses. Smiling. He walks in like he owns the room. Smile on his face. You would be Jacob Threadson, Seneschal, I assume. Yes. Who are you? You enter the home of a prince of the Camarilla, you will name yourself. Of course, of course. My name is Walter Crimson. I, 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 I uh, am aware that I come un uninvited, but... I think when your prince hears what I have to say, she will be glad of my visit. Just stares him down. Uh, he looks before the Seneschal answers. He looks to Flynn and to Katia. A pleasure! I am... Always glad to meet new faces. I hope we can become friends. And we'll nod. And I will stay smile. quiet because whatever this is, is none of my business. <laughs> I'm gonna love for a hand to shake and introduce herself as Flynn. With more warmth than she had to uh, Marcus, Joshua, whatever his name was. <laughs> his hand is cold as is any vampire's. He looks you in the eyes, he shakes your hand, and he winks. Flip. Yes. You appear to have had a busy evening. I hope things get better, my dear. Now, Mr. Threats. I think it best if you and I were to take a walk, and I were to make my case to you, Feel free to kick me out if you don't believe the prince wants to hear it, but... And he looks Jacob directly in the eye. You would be wise to listen. Jacob goes from stern to blank-faced in a moment. Yes, of course. This way. And the two of them walk out. Down a corridor, hallway, into a different part of the mansion. It's not too long after that that Juliet 
well, firstly, Mikhail and a walking, talking, uh, I really want to use the term snip in a box, um, but Nulai <laughs> enter the room, and you got about a minute or two before uh, Joanne and the other arrive. Lazarus has awoken, and he is very fucking confused. The sheriff says. Seems to be a common state of being tonight. Oh. Lazarus? A biblical joke, nah, worry not. It is evident Thank that you, you don't, sir, but I appreciate your attempt to fool me nonetheless. <laughs> the prince will be with us momentarily. And then we will talk business, my friends. But, suffice to say that our friend Nulai here has been welcomed into the Shadeport Camarilla Court. And, presuming none of you tell her to fuck herself in the next ten minutes, I don't have to commit any murders! Woo! There's always tomorrow. <laughs> Please don't joke about that. Before long, Joanne and the Prince enter. I take it you have made introductions? She, uh, asks Nulai. Uh... Begrudgingly, Nulai agrees. <laughs> uh, no, no, knowing that Mikhail's intense and rather scary stature is forcing him—not, not, not literally forcing—but knowing that the other outcomes would not be as pleasant. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Mikhail. Yeah, look, you've had you had time to uh, digest. But when he, like, stuck his head where you were still asleep, looked in your eye and said hello to you... Um, let me just explain what happened to you, by the way, when you were led away by him. Um, the, the Gwen Gwendolyn, from the very beginning, I mean, you heard me describe her, I hope, uh, yeah. showed up and basically, um, stuck a needle in your arm, took a bit of your blood and tasted it, and then said you were all good and fucked off back to her party. Callous bitch. Hey, at least she didn't use her teeth. <laughs> Not because she cared so. about you, but because just in case there was something in your blood. But, uh. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um. Speaking of blood, I. I am a little hungry. Oh, of course. I. <laughs> I do not know how long you spent, uh. tied up. But, but by all means, uh. Please. Any of my serving staff are welcome, and they are, of course, all willing to serve any of us gathered here today. There are Nulai a few takes a glance at the uh, glance at the staff. How many members are there exactly? In the room, there are two, but there's probably dozens in the house. Well, uh, Nulai assumes it's only the two he's referring to. I, I assume that there was like some sort of a hand gesture to show. You know, any of my staff here? Yeah. Yeah. Nulai slowly approaches the two staff members. I assume they're close together. And uh, he had, like, Nulai has had experience biting before, so it's not like he doesn't know how to how to do that. But hmm. closely, he he takes a look at one of them and asks them. He, like, looks them in the eye and asks them, may I? <clears throat> may I? Of course, sir. Hold out a wrist. Uh, taking the wrist in, in two hands, like... A, I will like remind you. Savage. Is there something else you want to ask him first? Well... Nula, like, I... I think where I think I know where you're getting at, but yep. I do not. I don't okay. think Nulai himself would know that. Cool. All right. So, Nulai Nulai takes the hand and bites the hand that feeds him. Okay. Um. You have a choice here. You can 
uh, drink one hunger worth, which won't hurt him at all. Two hunger worth, which also won't hurt him at all. Or you can kill him and be completely sated. Lulai slowly starts feasting on him without uh, without mu much restraint, but without much force in it either. It's just slowly satiating himself. If almost, almost as if waiting for a sign to stop him, whether it be a bodily sign of st saying I'm full or someone else to stop him. So I, I would say he, that you would he, you would wipe away two hunger until the the, the dude ain't going to stop you. He's in the the ecstatic haze of having his blood being yeah. drunk, which is really feels good. But the prince. Or, or Mikhail, and then Mikhail will, will grab your shoulder at one point and be like, Best not to kill the staff, my friend. Yeah, like, Nulai, Nulai has not ended up killing anyone before with it, and probably won't end up doing it now, either. Okay. You pull away, you are down to one hunger, which I have marked for you. Uh, another thing that you can do is attempt to heal the damage that you have sustained. Uh, this will require a rouse check, which might bring you right back up to where you started hunger-wise, but hey, there's another staff. Yeah, I mean, uh, might, might, might as well ask about... <clears throat> so, about about the hole. It's it's a little painful, I, I gotta say. Oh, you do not know how to uh, fix yourself? Not that, uh, not that anybody taught me, no. He uh, explains it... You essentially focus the blood within yourself to the area. You will it fixed. You, you, you imagine yourself becoming whole again. You might end up needing another drink afterwards, but you should be able to take care of it now. So Nulai, Nulai uh, closes his eyes, focuses, and just try to heal his two. Okay. If you're going to heal two, that is two rouse checks. A failure does not prevent you from healing, it just gets you hungrier. So you will heal to full, no matter what. So one, and two. <clears throat> okay, you're at three hunger again. Do you want to yeah. drink the other guy? <laughs> <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> Mikhail Since, uh, laughs a lot at this. Um, and he says, Well... <laughs> they're, they're, uh, you know, the other guy's just as willing. Feeling a, feeling a little woozy, Nulai approaches the other guy and asks again, once again, may I? Yes. Do you do anything different this and, time? Or? No, just uh, doing the usual routine. Okay, once again, Mikhail uh, helps you by letting you know when you should stop. And uh, your hunger is at one, you are fully replenished and healthy, and... Um, Everyone else just kind of embarrassed at this whole state of affairs, uh, especially the younger, like like Joanne. Like it's just, it's, it's, it's a bit oof. Yeah, this this hey, guy's. This Am guy. I really like? I know it's not as bad as the steak, but the whole purse on the eyes thing is really still bugging me, and I'm just like, ah, this is so awkward. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all said and done. The prince uh, gestures for quiet and for attention, and she says, All right. You have fulfilled your mission, the three of you. And you, Nulai, have, in your own way, earned your right to live here in this city. But no kindred lives for free. We would have you assist us, all four of you, in our claiming of this city. While I do consider myself the Prince of Shadeport, in truth... Where is Jacob, by the way? There was a visitor. Hmm. The two of them strolled off to have a chat. Stir. Crimson, he called himself. No recognition. I see. Very well. I would have the four of you form a coterie. Miss Flynn and Miss Katia, you will provide the experience. 
that Joanne and Nulai need to get by in this world? It is not phrased as a question. Uh, she continues. I will assign you to a neighborhood that is not yet fully under our control, but which we do have some information regarding. The resources of the Camarilla are quite limitless. So you will have our aid in acquiring a headquarters within this neighborhood. It can be anything you like that exists within it. Perhaps a place of business? Perhaps a night spot? Perhaps simply a residence in which all four of you can live? Of course, you may have personal homes, but all four of you will be able to stay in your headquarters. Your home will be your domain, and depending on another decision, the neighborhood itself may also be your domain. You will be free to hunt, to feed, within its borders. Any kindred who wish to pass through or to live within it would require your approval. Officially, the domain would be mine first and yours second, but that is the best you can get. Does this sound agreeable? Sounds I look at Lynn and Katya. Sounds better than anything I've had on offer so far. You may chafe under my requirement that you live and work together, but believe me, kindred die alone in this world. I cannot tell you what our opposition looks like. Anarchs, independents, cultists, there could be anyone in this city. It has been five years. I came here and brought my cohort with me because I believe we can do what is best for this city, for kindred and kind. With us in charge, we can keep things safe and fair. That is my goal. I hope it is yours too. I would be very grateful if you would do your part. Flynn will give another bow hmm. and thank thank the prince for the opportunity and the trust shown. There is one more decision you must make and I would advise you to consider both alternatives very carefully. In scenario for the first, as I stated, the neighborhood would be yours. Yours alone. And mine, but yours. You would be responsible for it. Its failures would be your failures. If the territory would be lost to us, you would be answering for that loss. In addition, word travels fast in our society. Many kindred, some of them even allied with us, would view four neonates, well, two neonates and two fledglings, alone as an opportunity, a weakness to chip away at. You will be targeted, and you will need to fend off those attacks on your own two feet. We would not leave you in the dark, but any help you sought from us would come at cost. You would source your own information. Be responsible for yourselves. The alternative, same neighborhood. But while it is yours and it is mine, in between, it shall also be Mikhail's. The domain would belong to the sheriff you would be referred to as his hounds. The responsibility of keeping the place safe would fall to him before you. To the public, 
Sheriff Mikhail Leskov would be the owner. And that name and reputation, no offence, carries a little more weight. You would be safer, but you would have less power. Mikhail might ask for your assistance in his endeavours as sheriff, and you will do as you are bidden. We'll have lots of fucking fun! Yes, quite. You will have access to his information. As a Nosferatu, he is quite capable of moving about unseen and learning things people do not wish him to know. I'm a fucking ghost in the night, bitches. That is quite enough, Mikhail. The choice is yours. Collectively. How long do we have to decide? <laughs> you will be deciding Perhaps. now. Hmm. My I don't care at... what they choose. I don't, I don't care what they choose. I'm not trusting them. But at least... I feel like I can trust Mikhail a little. I know what it's like out there alone. Um, Mikhail certainly seems capable. For and what it's worth. A sense of humor. For what it's worth. I am not so bad a boss. He grins and you can see the sharp teeth and it doesn't really help his case, but... <laughs> When we grin back, flash her teeth. Do we get dental? <laughs> 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 Fuck no! What? I'm a Nosferatu. I live in a fucking sewer. You think I have money? You should pay me more, my prince. I am going to interpret that as a joke. Yes, yes, of course. I think you would be fine on your own, but if it were my choice, I would absolutely prefer to have you than a quartet of bumbling morons. It is possible we have a trio of bumbling morons, but you have Katia, that's enough. <laughs> well, I have not decided yet. This one just came out of a box. You seem like a lot of fun, but you're covered in blood, and that worries me. Joanne! Joanne, I have high hopes, my friend, but I have not seen you in action yet. I was going to follow you and spy on you, but uh, Her Majesty said no. Mikhail, you should have followed this evening. You might have enjoyed the show. <clears throat> but in my defense... We're all here, we're all safe, and no untoward alerts <clears throat> yet. Flynn looks guilty at that. So, I take it you are leaning more towards operating under the stewardship of my sheriff? Uh, I specifically look over at Katiana and ask, what, what do you think? I have no arguments with this arrangement, if it is what my comrades desire. Katya's very amenable to... Well, I can't read her. I say what I need to say. This intrigues me, but we agree. Mikhail it is. Some of them find you are certain, my child? Yes. She looks at you, and as she does, you realize that if all three of them had picked one way and you had picked the other, the four of you would be doing the other. <laughs> and with that, she uh, smiles and she says, All right. The neighborhood we will be moving you into is called Crestville. It is a small area five I believe six blocks at most manageable 
At the moment, we are aware of one kindred who lives within. He is independent. Mikhail has the details. But I would ask, what form of headquarters would you wish? Remember, we can buy anything. Does anybody have ideas? I would like no. to get this into motion tonight, if I may. I have given it some thought. Good. I'm not sure how comfortable Katya and Flynn are with interacting on a regular basis with humans. Um, but I did think that perhaps a modern take on... It's not quite a dormitory. Think of it as a creative sanctuary. Something that we might use to bring together uh, designers and creators that I could work with during the day to avert any suspicions. Um, but the premises itself would have plenty of room for Dylan and Katya and Nulai to do their own thing without drawing attention. Uh, as long as it's got a decent garage, I'm good. This you propose an artist commune in essence? Um, perhaps not quite a commune? I mean, artist commune, I thought, went straight to the 70s. N no, no, in 2021, it's a little bit more... Mm. Sophisticated? Electronic? Yes. Mm. I expect You're a catchy being... name. <laughs> <laughs> that need not be decided immediately. We can unveil such a thing in future. For now, for tonight, any of you are welcome to stay here as my guest. But at, th at this point, it's it's getting fairly late. Um, I would say that, uh, yeah, um, the following night I would have you venture out to deal with this kindred. But given the time, we can address that later. Have any of you any questions of your prince? No, you've been pretty uh, holistic in your answers and explanation. I have no questions at this time, Your Majesty. I have much to think about after the evening's events. Uh, might I be excused? I uh, think I may meet with someone this evening. Of course. She looks uh, to Nulai, who has not spoken. So am I free now? Of course. Within reason. I cannot... Define reason. <laughs> ...give you a place to stay and grow. That was what the arrangement was. If you reject this place, I cannot stop you. However... The world of the kindred is one of rules. I would venture a guess to say you have not yet been taught them. Ignorance of the rules is no excuse in our society. If you walk out of this home and do not come back, and Mikhail finds you in violation of our traditions, well, you heard it just as I did, where my obligation ends. I have no choice. There's always a choice, my dear. It's just that some of them are bad ones. Did Flynn wish to speak to the prince? Uh, yes. She will thank the prince. Um, give a nod to Mikhail and say, uh, if that's all, then I'll be off. I have places to be. Das Vedanya, Bloody Mary. And gives him a little wave and uh, leaves. 
You do oh, show up in from... mirrors, by the way. Uh, the reflection thing is... There is one clan that has trouble with reflections, but uh, none among you are in that clan. So Flynn is just exiting? Okay. Oh. Yeah. I'll uh, wave at Flynn too. Sort of a shy wave. I wave back. She looks at Katia and Nulai, uh, the prince does, and says, And will either of you be staying here to... to well, today? I think it's best for me to stay here. Where the fuck else are you going to go? Back on the boat? <laughs> I will accept your hospitality for this evening. Mm -hmm. She uh, walks over to Pasha at this point and just um, looks looks to you. M may I? Please. Just gently scratches the top of the dog's head. <laughs> Animals do not tend to like our kind, unless we are well-versed in their, uh, well, in how to work with them. It's been a long time since I've been able to do this, and <laughs> the good boy hasn't shied away. Thank you. Well, if that would be all, I will wish you Good night. My uh, staff will escort you both to rooms. And uh, the prince departs. Mikhail just kind of shuffles out, you know, he says goodbye, unless he is caught or grabbed. Now, let's uh, let's move into epilogue state for um, our four players. Uh, you can do something, or you can not. You can just retire, uh, but we'll do it in order. Uh, Nulai, you are escorted to a, a, a nice fancy room. Is there anything you wish to say or do before you bed Nula. down? Nulai will just lie down on the bed, stare at the ceiling, and think about the predicament he has ended up in. As you do, you hear the same song again in your head. Not because the voice of the city is singing it to you, just... Well, it's making you reflect. It was poignant lyrics, I think. Katya. I think I have nothing in particular beyond resting. Very well. Joanne, I believe you said you wish to meet someone. <clears throat> yes, I... Um, go and throw in a change of fresh clothing. Something with cleavage well on display. Uh -huh. My stash onto my purse, grab my cell phone, and, well, it's time to head out. See, maybe, uh, maybe that guard from earlier. You might find him on Tinder, who knows? You didn't give him your number. But he no, did offer no. his, did you take it? Say again? Uh, you, he did offer you his as well. Did you take it? Yes. Okay, so you could call him up. Are you just looking for a snack at this point? Yes. Well, it won't affect your hunger unless you're committing a murder, but, I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's a good way to end your, end your night. Hmm. I will perhaps gloss over it rather than uh, go into the uh, details of exactly how you get your feeding done for the sake of the twitch terms of service <laughs> but i will say that you have a wonderful rest of your night and that you return home to the prince's mansion a little wistful because you know you won't be staying here much longer when when your uh new space which you're excited about like your your fan you'd love that your idea is is going to be uh it's going to become a thing you're, you're you're super excited to plan it um but you're you're going to miss the the security of this place having uh, your sire around, and Mikhail as well. You're looking forward to not having to deal with Jacob and Gwendolyn for a while, though. Yes. And I will... I mean, the familiarity is something that is always comforting, and I always dread change, but... As much as I dread it, I'm excited for it, too, so... Yes. Very conflicted feelings. Which brings us to Flynn. Yeah. 
I'll, uh, I've still got the van, so I'll take that and head to my flat. Mm. We uh, won't, at this point, say where exactly your flat is located, but you head there. You head there and... Yeah, it's dark, as usual, you live alone, you unlock the door, head inside. You see the, um, on the sort of coat hanging thing, I know that there's a word for that. Hook? You see, oh, yeah, on, on the hook, you see a familiar jacket or coat, and you see a fedora, and you know he's here. Even though she doesn't need to, need to she, there's a bit of a sharp intake of breath at the realization. Which is immediately exhaled because you're dead. Yeah. It's a habit. You turn on the light switch? Yeah. Hello, Flynn. Walter Crimson. He's sitting on your armchair. Big smile on his face. Waves. I'm sorry to have let myself in, but a man loitering outside a building dark of the night tends to attract suspicion and attention. My, 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 you, you got into some strife today, didn't you? I handled it. He looks at the blood on your shirt. I imagine you did. Am I going to hear about how you handled it in the coming nights? Is there going to be a problem? No problem. It's sorted. It's fine. Are you telling the truth? He's not asking you, I am. I think I am, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Right. Well, your business is your business. I do have the utmost faith in you, my dear. But, I heard a rumor about a new arrival to our city. An unconventional <laughs> arrival, one might say. And I'm going to need absolutely every detail you can spare about what happened. He's not using... He's not exerting his will upon you in the way of the blood. Not because he can't, but because he doesn't need to, does he? No. You really, Wait. really want to just blap, tell him everything he could possibly want to know. But do you attempt to resist this urge? No. It comes out in a flood, um, like literally it is babble, no one could make sense of this. You, you, you go from talking about the warehouse to talking about New Light to talking about Mikhail to talking about blood on your shirt and the dude that you killed. You, you, everything, everything, is, everything you did tonight is just and he, he just, whoa, 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 my, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, I, whew, that, hmm, yes, okay, let's, we're gonna take this slowly, but, hmm. I can't help but notice just a spark of hesitation, my dear. And takes a step back. It's been a while. I, I do lose track of time since our last uh, top up. I'm, he sits uh, there in the armchair <laughs> with his arm outstretched, and you will eat again, my dear. And this time you do feel as he says you will eat again my dear his will exerted upon you do you resist yes you try okay your resolve and your intelligence do I get any bonus because of the thing the um one advantage thank you I'm looking for resolve. Yes. 
with your intelligence. Uh, oh, the, neither of them are... They're both attributes. They're up top. Okay. Thank you. Two. I believe the strength of your bond is three. Yes? Yes. That's what we decided on? Yeah. You are walking towards him before you realize your feet are moving. Your knees hit the floor. And you... Your mouth is at his wrist and you are biting. And you are tasting his blood and it is exquisite. And as you drink, you start to think about your attempt to not do this and you're just confused. Why wouldn't you? You can trust him. I mean, it tastes amazing and, 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 you, and you know that he has your best interests at heart. You, you, you have no idea what foolishness possessed you to even question this. And we fade from the scene here knowing that everything you saw and heard tonight will be known to him before he leaves you. We leave on the image of Flynn biting into an outstretched wrist, the blood on her shirt joined by blood on her face again. And as we look at that image, outstretched wrist, Flynn biting in, Somewhere across the city, in a small room covered in paper, Prince Juliet Hammersley is drawing a sketch. And as she draws Flynn biting into an outstretched arm, the owner of that arm not depicted in the sketch, she sings softly to herself, when the fires, when the fires have surrounded you, when the hounds of hell come in after you, I've got blood, I've got blood, blood on my name. And that's where our first session will end. Thank you, friends. Uh, it was awesome. I will note our fourth player who joined us partway through, uh, Snip, as Nulai, the second Malkavian. You should follow Snip on Twitch as well as Ruthie on Fire. They are our two streamers, and Flynn and Katya are our non-streamers. Uh, debrief did how, did how did people feel I, i'm sorry that it took a while to get you in snip but you'll never have to wait that long again yeah, at least i i only had to what two and a half hours that was just <laughs> did you enjoy it me const ah, i mean it, I, w I was eager to get in but you know we can like, put you back I, in the box <laughs> i mean the, the biggest uh, <laughs> Like, the biggest temptation was to constantly blurt out jokes every now and then, and I knew I couldn't, so... You could, I just, we just wouldn't hear you. Well, yeah, but... But you can now, and from now on you can, and, and it's, it's important story building. I was kinda hoping that they'd pull you free before they got back, but... I, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't gonna make them. <laughs> so... I got the feeling that you were like, <laughs> I was just like, no, I'm not having fucking wild ass vampire romping around in the back of the van with the dog and these people that I've literally just met. Like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, that that would quickly escalate to, I swear to God, I will turn this van around. Kind of moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right, back to Winnipeg. <laughs> But yeah, from, from, from next session on, uh, the four of you will be present for all of it, so long as you're not taking a night off. That is a thing. Uh, given that this is modern nights, it is 
possible to work with three out of the four of you, but we'll, we'll attempt to, to have everybody here. Uh, the goal would be to do our next one uh, two Sundays from now. What is that? 14th, yeah, I think. You know, no, don't worry. It's Valentine's Day. I'm sure nobody has any plans for that day. Is it? Yep. Is well, it? we'll see. <laughs> I forgot that was even a thing, though. I don't know that people our See, generation... nobody has any plans for that. I contend that it is not actually a thing. Hmm. I, I, with, with, uh, yeah, well, with you on this one. I well, mean, I was only planning to spend my Valentine's Day looking corpses anyway, so... Well, let me help <laughs> you with that. Uh, well, we can tentatively lock it in, uh, as always, if people... If, if something comes up and people need to not, then... Um, I, I will say that if Snip can't make it, we won't, because, like, he's already waited long enough. He will be playing next session. But um, if it's one of the other three of you, I might consider, like, maybe doing one without, if not, if we don't end up waiting a week. But, you know, it's that that's the goal. The goal will be the 14th. As it gets closer, we'll figure out if you can all do it. Uh, but, yeah. I would ask that those players of mine that are not Raptor, uh, do not make any use of the knowledge you may have gained from Raptor's little epilogue there. That was just something that well, I felt I already forgot about it. was a good idea to show for audience reasons. Um, yeah. Does, does anybody have any thoughts on the game? Things that they appreciated or, or, would, would, or didn't? I am an open book. Um has a huge fan base already so sorry what does mikhail <laughs> yeah, yeah no i had fun with him um i'm glad you picked him but i wanted like that mm, he, he would have been involved either way but like i'm glad I'm, I, this 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 good this good this good next session will be interesting ah, so it's the mass effect style of choice I mean, he would be involved in the sense that you would still see him around because he occupies an important point, uh, an, an important position, but he wouldn't, you know, be as involved, definitely. It's, yeah. As a first session of any kind of tabletop role-playing type situation that I've ever participated in, I regret being as quiet as I was, but it was a really fun introduction, and I think I will be a lot more comfortable next time. So I'm super excited. Same for and me. Well, I feel like you spoke up more than I did. That's a, that's I kind of a spoke up more than character I personality, though. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you talked often enough once you were given the opportunity to snip. Uh, my question is: Did everybody know it was snip in the box when I opened the box? My I was yes. pretty confident once we knew there was a box. <laughs> yes. My my decision. Uh, I, I had no intention of hiding it from the players. It was just hiding the fact that there was a fourth player from the people watching. That was the the idea. Yeah, I, I was tempted to make some dick in a box jokes, but well, <laughs> I didn't have the opportunity. <sighs> I think I I was kind of I I yeah when you said legs then I was like wait could have been severed legs you're right that 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 is vague but she she was at the I time mean, looking uh, at the south half of the you, box. you gotta realize that Fl you gotta realize that Flynn all all she saw was a pair of legs and she immediately wanted to jump in the box I, I look I panicked it wasn't one of my better moves. But I panicked and I tried it. Are you saying you regret it now? Yeah, I regret it. I regret the the snip leg box thing. I'm honestly devastated <laughs> you failed that because that would have been so Me much too. fun. Uh, because <laughs> like at that point, all you saw was legs. I'd be like, um, you 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 you'd, you'd see this. You you'd probably have fucking knocked the stake. It could have been a a wake up like oh unintentional. <laughs> like wakes up with somebody else with him in a box. Yeah. Damn. Hey. <clears throat> now I'm sorry. <laughs> Come here often. Immediately gets punched in the face. <laughs> it's possible. But yes, uh, between this session and the next, we will sort out details for the new uh, Coterie headquarters. Uh, I imagine I'll work with Ruth on that, because it's, it's her place. 
Yes, I'm excited for that. I'll think about cool. um, something clever name, huh? Yeah, you know, anyone can, can contribute on that. Feel free to use the group chat. But yeah, tomorrow, uh, next session we will... Mm, I might, yeah, coincide it with the... Because uh, it'll take a bit to get the place ready. I can, I could either advance this one night so that you can do the job the prince wants and say that the, you know... Yeah, well, it'll, it'll take a bit. It'll take a session or two to get the to get the place ready, but we'll sort out the details so that we have them and we can run into that. Like, if we're halfway through a session and we're like, hmm, I'm out of stuff to do, let's skip ahead three weeks, and hey, you got a building now! Then we've got it all ready and prepared. But uh, we'll, we'll see how the session uh, next session pans out. You do have uh, a task planned that uh, would have been happening tonight if we had moved faster than we did, which isn't a problem. Uh, I always assume that... Uh, in tabletop, we will do less than I have pre prepped, because if we do more than I have prepped, then I'm in trouble. Thank you for being a uh, willing uh, party that didn't immediately, like, burn down everything I had and, like, fucking try to kill the prince and, and just completely um, send me off into orbit in terms of how to run this. Uh, I, I appreciate, like, did... did, did I hesitate to ask. You didn't feel too railroaded. I I no. felt very railroaded when I couldn't choose uh, my flaws that I wanted to choose. That's it. Yeah, Snip wanted to be stake bait, which is a flaw that means that if you get staked, you die. It interfered well, with my plans a lot. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> of course, Snip. But you know, that's a really good floor, though. Like I, I always took I mean, it. I'm supposed to be good in general, but you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it's it's <laughs> a, it's a good bad thing. It's it's a weird. Well, it depends. If someone's trying to stake you, like that's bad someone for your future as a player. He is in the same coterie as me, and I have like i'll accidentally stake him with the dowel rods for the curtains <laughs> it would have been bad for me the way you reckon you reckon yes. it might have been bad oh that's interesting well anyway uh thank you friends again uh reminder to follow snip and ruthie on the twitch the smart organized thing to do would be to post a link um but I think what I what I saved had uh, Ruth's information, but not Snip's, in case it was called upon before Snip was revealed. But most of the people here know who Snip is, I think. <laughs> Type your links. I'm a, I'm not professional. Uh, thank you, friends in the chat. Thank you for your patience in my um. Yeah, there we go. There's yours. Uh, and then Snip, you can click on his name and then find him from there. That's a, that's a nice uh, low effort way in. All right. I'm going to wrap this up and turn this off. I will catch you stream people next Wednesday for my next Final Fantasy XIV run. Obviously, I take uh, Mondays and Tuesdays off. As for this, we'll be back to this, hopefully, on the 14th, two Sundays from now. Otherwise, pretty soon after that, if we can if we can help it. Uh, so I'll long. I'll let you know if I find a date. Farewell. Bye. I'm rooting for you, Snip. Bye-bye.